Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to another round of Kanji Plays. And today, we are getting into Infinity Defiance by Corvus Belli. Um, this universe has been, I'm a huge sci-fi fan, like, ridiculously, stupidly huge sci-fi fan, to where I would let terrible sci-fi movies slide and be like, it was a good movie, <laughs> and be very critical on every other movie that I watch. So... Um, I've been wanting a sci-fi game for a while, and I know people have said things like Twilight Imperium, but that's a massive game that takes more than a solo player to play. So um, I've looked around for different types of games. I've got a lot of suggestions. This was one that I saw on, the Kickstart on Kickstarter last year where I just said, it looks like a game that I'd like. So I backed it on Kickstarter. The um, first wave of this game delivered a week ago. I believe, and I've been reading them since the delivery. I've been reading the rule book and trying to get used to it. There is a lot of information for me to give out to you today uh, when we get played. Hey, Sajat, six race solo of Twilight Imperium for on stream. You could wing that, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish. I wish. All right, so um, there's a lot of information to go through because even though when you look at the table, it's going to be like, oh, it's a tiny footprint on a the table. There's a lot of rules that go towards this game. And the reason why is because the Infinity Universe exists past this Kickstarter, past this board game. It, before that, there was the Infinity Universe where it is like D&D &D massive with stories unfolding in different places, main characters, everything that you can do. It's been around a really long time. And this is the first dungeon crawl-based board game that Corvus Belly is kind of greenlit to say, hey, let's do this. Um, I've asked a lot of questions uh, in the Facebook forums and uh, directly to Corvus Belly, to, like all over to get some questions and answers. Some things I got answered, some things I didn't, so I called it because it made sense as how the rule book is written. That may change as they evolve the rule book because I believe on their website there is a 1.0 out now, which is what I'm following. Um, but they might upgrade that to be more clear. But I've ruled certain things because, well, one thing truly, because it says it in the rule book, but it doesn't explain it properly. So we'll go with that. And should it change, I will update. Just how it goes. All right, let's get some information about this game. Then let's get down to the table because I've got a lot of information to give you. Okay, so. Uh, Infinity Defiance. Right now, since it's been delivered uh, last week, uh, it's been ranked at 9.2 on Board Game Geek. That's pretty darn impressive for one week, but I'm sure as it goes through, it will, you know, it'll either stay go a little bit higher or tank based on what more people getting the game in their hands think. I've played through one scenario just to get used to it. And a 9.2 is accurate for me because there's a lot there's a lot each player gets to do that makes this game so worth it. So the weight on it's about a 3.0 out of 5. Moderate kind of. Playtime is around um 45 to 45 minutes to an hour. And it's one to four player, but the community is saying it's, well, the community is saying best play is two to four, but we'll see. The reason why is because you're always controlling four characters. Always, always, always. Um, you get to switch up your four characters as you find new people to join the crew of the Defiance, but you'll always play with four no matter what throughout the campaign. Okay. Ugh, I got to take a breath. <laughs> There's a lot for me to tell you about this game. Let's go down to the table. And then I'll start the explanation of everything. And I've got graphics, I've got stuff, because my, you know, my camera is not the top-notch best camera ever created with the clarity of the gods. So there are, there are things that are hard to see, and I've got graphics to help for all that stuff. I have prepared, and I'm super nervous because I... Super nervous. So here we go. <laughs> okay. This is the board, okay? This, from here... To here is the actual game board that will be on your table that you and everybody else will be playing. This here is the characters. Looks like a lot, a lot of jumble, a lot of things to keep track of. But if you're playing individual, it actually works out really great because there's so many things your characters can do. Solo playthrough. 
I'm gonna work it out to where I'll explain it. I'll explain it. We'll go through everything and we'll step through as we go. Okay. Before we jump into all this, let me read you some story from the rule book on Infinity Defiance. And it's just this brief right here. And then I will get into explaining like you would not believe. Okay, so here we go. We haven't heard from Team Orpheus or Silencer, so we must consider them missing in action. Even though you're the only survivors of the triple pronged attack, the mission is still on. The words of Quervo Goldstein, 012 liaison officer, thunder over the background sound of the holographic images of the security footage, which was what you saw before. Uh, if we go... Oop, not that one. This one. Here. Uh, the flashes of gunfire and explosions lit the troubled faces of Quang, Uma, Caden, and Jasmine. Silent witnesses as they watched the... Shasvati troops of the combined army attacking both 012 facilities, slaughtering the entire staff in their path. How did they do it? Kuang asked. Kiang, sorry. Arms crossed on his chest. Yeah. How the hell did they know that there were three teams and their locations? Caden bellowed, banging his fists on the table. Undoubtedly, we've, um, we've underestimated the enemy's capacity to infiltrate our systems and organization, replied Goldstein with bitter shame in his tone. Wait a minute. Did you say organization? Do you mean there were impersonators in 012 itself? Inquired Uma, a frown across her face. That's our main working hypothesis. Can we even trust anyone? Jasmine retorted, her Corregidor accent thickening with worry. You can trust me, of course, and my CEO, Ensign Cho. You'll, so you'll soon receive the ciphered reports and our identity analysis certificates in your comm logs. I didn't mean you're right to do so, uh, Sergeant Patakovas, the liaison officer interrupted. Immediately, the entire Defiance team, except Caden, discreetly consulted their comm log. For a couple of seconds, all that could be heard in the cargo hold was the shooting and the horror of the attack's footage. Goldstein's voice rang out through the cargo hold, pulling the team out of their self-absorption. The fate of the human sphere is in your hands now. All right. Cool. So, that was our introduction into Infinity Defines for the rulebook. That's not even a campaign yet. Okay, so let's get into some explanations. We've got four characters that we're starting off with. Four of them. So let's, I got graphics. Boom. Okay, so because if you try to see it on my screen over here, even if I shared it, it's going to be a little fuzzy and you're going to get annoyed. So we've got Uma Sorsen, right? She is our gunslinger. Let's break down these character cards because I'm going to show you all of them, but you need to understand what they mean, okay? So on the, on the top left, where you see like a, it looks like a, a, a transformer head, that is their headgear. That's where head slot gear equipment will go. Bottom left, body gear. That's where their body set gear is going to go. On the right side, one hand item and, two, and another one hand item, but they can have two hand items and that will take up both slots. At the bottom is their inventory, which means they can only carry two things in their inventory. You can take a gun out of your hand slot and put it in your inventory and it doesn't cost an action, okay? So you can actually swap stuff around for free when you're playing and everything's all good, cool, and hunky-dory. Oh, so at the top right, you see four boxes. Those four boxes indicate health, which is at the top. She has eight health, that's her life. When she, I'll get to that in a second. Then. The next one to the left of that is speed. So she has six movement. That's how far she can move. She can move six hexes. You don't, like most games where it's, where it's you move, you shoot, that's it. This game, you can break up movement. I can move three, shoot somebody for an act. So move three, shoot somebody, and then move the other three. Or move two, shoot somebody, and then move four. So you can break up your move action, okay? The, Next one that's in that line on the rightish side is that is your defense die. By default, you get a defense die. It's blue. We'll go over dice in a second. Don't worry about it. But it's a blue die that she's going to roll for defense base. Okay? If she lost all her armor, everything that she had, she would just roll a blue die to try to defend herself. 
Then the last one at the bottom there is aggro. Okay. So this game deals with aggro like every single t If you hit somebody, you pull aggro, which means you get an aggro token. Enemies, AI cards have uh, things that say attack the person with the highest aggro. So it determines, hey, Steven, how's it going? It determines who you're going to hit, okay? If you go over aggro, that turns into reinforcement points. So let's say uh, Uma here has five aggro and she's about to collect her six. Instead of collecting a six, that six becomes a reinforcement point that goes on the board. When you get up a certain number of reinforcement points, enemies start spawning. And we'll run through the enemy and all of that other stuff. Like I said, there's a lot to go through. She has her starting equipment, which I'll show you in a second, which is dual pistols. She's got two pistols. She's got headgear and she's got body gear. And we'll, I'll show you all that stuff in a second. But she's got great going. Excited to see this game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's got these two attack, these two special abilities. She's got accurate. So if she's equipped with two light weapons, which she starts off with them, you may add one success, that's what that star is, to your attack rolls for each blank face rolled on your die. I roll a lot of blanks, don't I? So with her, when I roll blanks or ones, instead of them being just complete misses, they count as successes. And successes is how much damage you do, one point of damage. <laughs> hey, I don't know how's it going. <laughs> Welcome, pull up a chair, pull up a chair. Um, so then she has saturation attack. You may add one yellow die to your combat roll if you are equipped with two light weapons, which she will be. So automatically, because she has two weapons that she's starting off with that has their own dice that you roll, she's gonna add a yellow die in to roll with it. And once again, we'll get in the dice, we'll get in all that. So this is her starting character sheet. And let me get the campaign book. Let's talk about Uma for a second, and then I'll go into her equipment, and we're, I'm gonna introduce you to all these people. So, Indigo Captain Uma Sorsen. There's no bond stronger than that of blood, Uma Sorsen's father always said. Family and blood were paramount to, to Pierre Sorsen. He wasn't the leader of Nakasel, or Nordisk Krieg of Heimdall, or Nordic Warriors of Heimdall, a radically ultra-nationalist group from uh, Slavheima. That, the, that defends uh, Pan Oceana's moral and racial superiority for nothing. Uma and her little sister Tara were raised hearing those ideas, repeated ad nauseum, both in their home and in their paramilitary, paramilitary encampments, the group has on the frozen plains of Trollhatan, where their members prepare to defend their ideology through force of arms if needs be. They both spend more time in these camps than they would have liked, getting ready for a supposed confrontation against the whole human sphere that their father thought inevitable. Human sphere is where all humans are in the universe. Uh, and, though they always hated it, both the ideas and the Spartan and combative regime they were subjected to ended up making the words, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, true. Thus, as soon as they were old enough to leave their father's home, they both enlisted in the army, for fighting was what their father had taught them, and fighting is what they did best. Yet, while Tara wanted to get as far away as possible from her past, enrolling in the Navy and leaving the planet, her sister preferred to take advantage of the knowledge gained in those encampments. Uma enlisted in Svalheim's Winter Force, where the experience acquired on the frozen plains of Trollhatan catapulted her to the Svalheim <laughs> Nice Regiment. There she would serve with distinction for many years until she was recruited by the Indigo units of the Pan-Oceanic Special Operations Command. This assignment took her away from her planet and her past to perform missions all across the sphere. Nonetheless, when it seemed that Uma had finally found her place, fate would shake her entire world. During a, pa during a patrol mission during the, during the intermediate blockade of Paradiso, the POS Obsidian Sphere of Tom, a freight on which her sister served, was attacked and boarded by the combined army. Though the attack was repelled, the crew suffered many casualties, and due to the extreme violence of the assault, many crewmen were missing in action. Among them was artillery non-commissioned officer Tar Sorensen, whose body was never found. This terrible news made Uma reevaluate her career. Vengeance became the new driving force in her life, and together with discovering her sister's fate, 
the destruction of the combined army her main goal. To do so, Uma requested to be transferred to the Strategic Security Division, where she would serve together with the infamous Hexus as attached Indigo officer in hopes of gaining more information on Terra's whereabouts, if she was alive, or at least of a chance of to hit the combined army as hard as possible if she wasn't. Focus on this personal mission, Uma has become an officer as efficient as she is obsessive, always volunteering for any operation that can get her closer to her particular goals. The thing is that, although she doesn't want to admit it, her father was right. Blood bonds are strongest and, and the ones that Captain Uma Sorsen cannot escape. It is blood that binds her to her sister, and it is blood that this officer wants from the combined army. So Uma is serious. Serious. All right, so let's take a look at her, her loadout. And we'll get him in a second. Do, do, do. So this is her weapon. She has two of these, right? Her pistol. Now, it, you know that it's her starting weapon because her picture's in the top right, and that is true. If you get the game, anywhere the picture's in the top right, that's their starting stuff. Um, it's a one-handed weapon, as you can see, so it fits in a one-handed slot on the left. Its attack range is one to, four, one to four hexes away. And when you attack with this weapon, you're going to roll an orange die and a blue die. Now, you see that thing at the bottom that says um, two exclamation points? Those are called switches, which is where we get to the dice. Which one has a good switch on it? Uh, the orange die probably has it. That's okay. We can make it work. All right. So here we have these dice. So you see here there's an exclamation point, an exclamation point, two stars, it's probably blurry, um, a star and a shield. So you see these two exclamation points? If I roll them, I can combine them together to say, okay, that's a switch, which means when you, when you use switches, they enact before you deal out damage. So I would use those two exclamation points. They're removed from the things that I can use, and I'll say, okay, with those two, I will add one success to my roll. Okay, so if that she has two weapons, both of them are pistols with the same stuff. That doesn't mean that you roll two orange and two blue die. You still roll one orange, one blue die. You're taking a shot. But if you roll four exclamation points, four, you can then say you, you're doing two successes, one for the top gun, one for the bottom gun. Okay, it took me a while to, to suss that out, but that's how it works. But you still only shoot with one gun, okay? All right, her, all these weapons, there she is. Her armor is a medium armor that she's starting out with. Uh, this has, oh no, okay, they haven't upgraded these. Yeah, they haven't upgraded these. This one is her helmet, there it is. So they haven't upgraded these, but I'll tell you what they mean. They're, they're using old stuff. So her medium armor, which is called her tactical armor now when you buy the game, um, is basically says that she, she adds a black die to her defense roll. So remember, she gets a blue no matter what. Now she adds a black die. So she's going to roll two dice when she rolls defense. There's a really cool thing about defense that I love about this game that we'll get into. So that is her, that is her medium armor or tactical armor that she's going to this is her accuracy helm, or precision helmet, for people who get the game. Um, but it does, the, the verbiage of what it does is the same. Um, this weapon you're equipped with gains plus one to maximum range. So remember, her gunshot was one to four. Well, with her accuracy helmet, or precision helmet, she will shoot. Now her range is one to five. And that's what that means. Okay? Every unit comes with an auto med kit. Um, the auto med kit is not something where you're like, I'm low on health, I need to heal myself. Nope. When you run out of health, so her health, remember, is eight. And we can go back to go down. Her health is eight. When you suffer that, you go down. The only thing you can do on that turn, because you're still going, the only thing you can do on that turn is heal yourself or somebody heal you. And the auto med kit, the one-time use auto med kit, what it does is when you go down, it automatically injects you with health and you get back up for eight health and you take a consequence. 
We'll talk about consequences in a second. Like I said, there's a lot to keep in mind before we hop into this because I want you to understand as I'm doing stuff, you're like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? This is why. So you get, everyone gets an auto med kit um, that will heal them. They don't get to use it. It automatically triggers when they go down and they heal and get back up, but it's a one-time use. She also has a very cool thing, um, a specialty called light weapon. So that, once again, these are the old cards, but it still holds true. It's called light weapons and it's a level one specialty. There is actually a tech tree that you could use to build out your character, which is really, really cool. So you can upgrade your character as you go. Um, her tech is this one that says she adds one yellow die to her combat rolls if I'm equipped with one or more light weapons. So automatically, I'm rolling an orange, a blue, a yellow, and now I get another yellow. So I'm rolling four dice when I attack, which is pretty darn cool. Okay, that is Uma. And then, ooh. Uh-oh, I think I crashed. Let me see if I can reopen it. I have to close it and reopen it all at once. Because this is all fun stuff. Uh, initial cards. Give me one second. Let's reopen it. There we go. All right. Next one, and let, let me show you how different they all are. Next one is, hey, Jim, how's it going? Hold the chair. Next one is Jasmine, or her, her, her nickname, Jazz. So people, you'll hear people say Jasmine Jazz. It's Jasmine or it's Jazz. That's why it's in quotes. Her, her, uh, so she is our hacker. This girl is cool, okay? <laughs> all right, so we've already gone through the loadout slot, so let's just step through this. She's got eight health. Six movements, she rolls a blue die for defense, and her aggro is four. She is our resident hacker. Hackers get to hack through walls, and we'll talk about line of sight and all that other stuff. So she has this thing called, she has this remote AI that she lets out called Billy. Billy is the cutest darn anime style robot you've ever seen in your life, but she drops Billy for free, and then Billy moves when she moves, or activates when she activates. So she'll do her stuff, and then Billy gets to do his stuff. Um, she's got this other thing called Debugger. Once per hacking roll, you may reroll any die that rolled a blank face. Once. So that gives her rerolls just in case there's any, ever a problem. Okay? Her equipment. Why, she's so cool! <laughs> uh, let's see. Alright. I gotta find her right one. And she doesn't have it. Uh, there's. She starts off with a stun pistol in her hand, which gives her two yellow dies, so range of one to four. And her switches are a little bit different. Um, her switches is for one exclamation point, she can impose the stun state to a target. And stun state, I'll get in the states once again, a lot to go over, make sure you understand. Her stun state. She can impose stun state, or she has three exclamation points, she can impose a mobilize. Okay? So, very cool. One or the other, not both. <laughs> very, very important. Because you can't get four and be like, okay, I'm going to put both of these on them. No. One or the other. So, she, she gives you some options. The immobilize is better than the stun, but the stun is super helpful. It's super, super helpful. Her gear is just this one really cool device. Let's find it. There it is. Her hacking device. Her hacking device is really, really cool because it comes with some pre-made programs that she's already coded in them. And her hacking device is a range from zero to six. That means that I can, and her hacking device is the only thing that doesn't need line of sight. I can go through walls and hack people. As long as they're close enough, I can reach them because I can detect them on my hacking unit. When I hack, I roll a yellow and uh, orange die. And you see that symbol at the top left where it's a different symbol? You're like, oh, that's how you defend. It is how you defend, but there's two types of defense. There's a defense of someone is shooting a gun at me, and there's a defense of someone's hacking me to break me down. And that is how she defends hacking with two black die. So she will only roll one blue die for defense from a gunshot. 
Never seen this. What is the goal? Um, the goal of this game is basically it's a dungeon crawl that's playing a campaign. I'm just going through everything real quick because when I start playing, I don't want people to be completely lost by, like, okay, how are you able to do that? How is that possible? This is the thing to understand what she's doing, right? So she gets the three types of hacks. She gets daemons, anti-personnel, and... It, like I said, there's a lot to go through. People who play her will really enjoy playing her. Um, raid, uh, raider. Daemon, raider, and anti-personnel programs. Uh, so let's see if they show you what they are. Yep. So this is her first program that comes preloaded. And it, you know it because her image is in the top right of the card. And it basically says pick lock. So whenever I'm going to interact with a console, I get to roll a, an extra yellow die. And I may re-roll die for all interact console rolls. Cool. Her next interact is the skull buster. This, this is an anti-personnel. So when I attack a creature through hacking capabilities, um, I add a yellow die and I inflict two instead of one. Hey, Adam, how's it going? So, and BTS is how much they do to stop me from doing it. So I can roll and I can hit them for, I can actually break them down and kill them with a skull buster. And there should be one more. There it is, the guy stayed. Um, this one has a switch state that says impose the focus state on to a character within range of your hacking device. All characters within range of my hacking device. So that's pretty cool. Okay, and I'd have to roll to make sure that that happens. That's jazz. Okay, so she gets a robot that, she, that gets to do stuff that has its own abilities. She gets this hacking device that has three things to break down, and she has a stun pistol and an auto med kit. She's awesome. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Next character. Caden First Strike. And I'll read, I, I, I don't want to slow down too much to read backstory, but I'll follow it up with backstory later. Caden First Strike is the next character that I have. 10 health, 6 movement, blue die to defend, 5 aggro he can get on Frenzy. Immediately after you inflict any number of damage during a combat roll, I get to move. So I get to move one space for free. So let's say there's two enemies that are two spaces apart. I hit one, I inflict damage on them, and I kill them. I then get to move for free. You're doing great. I thought I'd be lost, but I love this explanation, bud. Thank you so much, Adam. I'm, you have no idea how much anxiety I have right now. <laughs> um, so, so basically, he'll be, able to, um, he'll be able to hit somebody, and then he gets one movement for free. Not move up to six, just one space. So I can go and I can say, there, there are two things, there's two spaces between them. I'm going to run up to this guy because he's weak. Hit him, kill him, and then move to the next guy. And that's, that's how that works, right? If you are already next to the guy who's weakened, you can attack him, get to move for free, and then use your other action to attack. Two actions you get per turn, and we'll get into all that. He has a tech. You cannot, so he is the only character that can't perform hacking actions, and no one can hack him because he is a fighter. He doesn't care about tech. He just cares about cutting into people and ripping them to pieces. So, uh, get a... Hey, Brian, how's it going? It's going good. Just running through some explanations. We haven't started yet, so pull in, pull in, pull in. Pull up a chair. Okay, so he, if someone wants to hack him, he can't be hacked because he doesn't care. He's just like, I, I just stab stuff and I enjoy it. That's my pastime. So he has, his equipment to start off with, and that's the one that was all the way at the top that you kept seeing, are the Rippers. Just two blades that he runs through. They are, if you notice on the left, it shows two hands. That means it takes up both hand slots. He can't go through and say, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, hold on. All right, pick up a gun and start shooting. These take up both his hand slots. So if you want to equip something else, you have to store that in inventory and then equip that item. He will attack. It is always close combat uh, CC. So he will attack. You see that star? That means no matter what, he gets an automatic success. Automatically. Then he rolls a yellow and orange die to, to inflict more. If he gets a success in an explanation, exclamation, explanation, exclamation, he will inflict 
one damage to an adjacent enemy who is not the target. So that means I roll die. I get like three successes. I kill this guy. I then spend that extra that I got and I hit this other guy for one. And then I get a free movement. <laughs> so you got to play it to see how it goes, right? Um, his equipment. We haven't gone to my, my favorite boy, uh, uh, Ken Gao, yet. His equipment is medium armor, just like Uma. Um, it's tactical armor. He gets to all it really gives him is a black die to roll for defense. So he gets a little bit extra in defense, and that's how he starts off. Okay, make sense? Cool. I'm gonna start speeding, 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 so you don't get uh, we don't get locked up on too many details. So. Uh, Let's see. We should have. I could zoom through this a little bit faster. These are all their upgrade stuff. He gets this too. He gets CC Weapons Expert, which lets him add a blue die to his combat rolls if he's equipped with if he's equipped with close combat weapons like his rippers. So his rippers are an orange and yellow. He then gets to roll a blue, and if he hits, he gets to inflict a bunch of different stuff. So you see the versatility in all the characters, right? It's just completely, completely different. Um, Jazz, I didn't show you her her upgrade that she gets is because these are all the upgrades from the trees. Here it is, hacker. This is hers. Add one yellow to your hacking and interact with console rolls. So every, every single time I interact with a console, I get to roll an orange, an extra orange die, and that is her upgrade ability that she starts with. Okay, final guy, final guy. I promise you, final guy. This, the final guy is Ken Gao. This is the tank, and he is heavily armored. 12 health, 5 speed, rolls a blue die for defense, aggro 8. I'll draw their fire. So once per activation, when you inflict any damage to an enemy, you may take aggro tokens from a character and place them on your card in, uh, instead. So basically what he's doing since he's the tank is he's saying, let's say Jazz has four aggro tokens. He can say, okay, I shoot, I hit the enemy. I'm going to take those aggro tokens from Jazz and put them on me because I want them to focus on me. And I'm going to just shoot them from their point out because I could take the hit. And he can. He's a truck. Um, his defensiveness, once per successful defense or... Uh, the square with the with the uh, with the shield in it is a successful defense. So it's like a crit defense, and we'll talk about crits and all that other stuff. Once per crit defense roll, you may reroll any die that rolled a blank face. So he gets some pretty cool rerolls. Um, his weapon of choice is. Well, his gun first is a two-handed heavy shotgun that he rolls two blue dies, gets an automatic success, and he's got a bunch of, he's got three switches that he can use. Add one, I can add one success to the roll for two shields. When I attack on a, on a success and exclamation, inflict one damage to an enemy adjacent, so just blasting shot, and, or I can impose the stun state to a target with that shot um, if I decide to use it. So it works out great. His weapon, uh, was that it? Yep. His weapon, heavy armor. I add two black dice to my defense rolls. But you see that hack? That means that they can hack me because I'm in tech mech gear that um, I will roll a black die to help myself. So if that makes sense. And we'll get into all that. His specialty is heavy weapons expert. He'll be able to add one orange die to his weapon attack roll. And that's what he starts off with. Whew. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've gone through these people, uh, which is these people who we're going to be playing with. I, I went through them so you can see, and you can see their setup just like I told you before, right? Billy's here. These are her three hack abilities, her hacking unit, um, her stun pistol. This lovely token, which is a poker chip, is their turn order token. So it'll say green on one side, red on the other to let you know that they activate it. Okay? So I've set them all up here as to how they'll go. Now we come over to the defiance, to the mission. 
done with them, everything goes easy from here. Because that was just explaining how every character will work, and as you switch off, it goes. We've set up the first mission, which is called the Extraction, that we're going to go through. Um, I'll wait to read their backstories at the end of the mission so people don't feel like, okay, you're talking too much and you're not playing, and we're here for board games, Kanji, shut up and play. So I'll read their story at the end, so, you can, so, so we'll get through this. These are aggro tokens, right? They're upgrades from the Kickstarter that you can get. Um, they're just this orangish thing. These are reinforcement tokens. These are the things that get bad, bad people back on the board. This is the Defiance. This is our ship. And we get to upgrade our ship as we play. So if someone's in the med bay, we can go back to our quarters to heal from wounds and try to get rid of consequences. Um, we come over here to the bridge, come over here to the cargo bay and engineering, come over here to practice target shooting so we can upgrade our skills. This is the big one. The, these are the, um, are they called Goliath Drives? I'm trying to remember what it's called. Like I said, I got a reference back because it's a lot. But it's so worth it. This game is so much fun. Once you get it down, it's called the Minotaur. Minotaur Engine. Okay. Our goal as you were reading, we are the last of our, is the sword, is the sword sorcery in space? Most likely, yes. <laughs> um, we, our goal, the main goal of this entire game, is we are the last of a three-pronged attack crew to travel through this Archeon wormhole, this, this wormhole void, get through it to the other side of space that is not part of the human sphere and stop an invasion that is coming to destroy the human sphere. And Corvus Belli said that this, is, that this campaign is the beginning of a massive epic that they're considering working on to get everything going, right? We have to upgrade these engines to jump. If, if we don't, as we progress through the campaign, because win, lose, or draw, the story continues no matter what you do. When it's time for us to jump, there is a specific role in, that this thing takes on that we need to be ready for. So this is important, right? But keeping our people healthy is important. Finding new people to work on the ship because it's not just going to be the four of us. Okay, cool. We have um, the round tracker. So the round tracker, this is the round tracker, goes from 1 to 10. That's our round tracker. This is the alert level. Alert level is very, very important because alert level gets raised more enemies come and they get beefed up and if we hit maximum alert the enemies switch to epic mode basically they're like okay we're at maximum alert we're going to flip our card over from blue to red and then we're going to decimate everything in our path because they get really really hard um, so maximum alert maintaining aggro is the strategy of this game how can we get to our goal maintain aggro so we don't raise the alert levels and kill <laughs> and win. So there's strategy to this game. I said that, that when you go down, you could take a consequence. These are the consequence cards. So if you go back to your ship, you don't rest up to get rid of aggro, uh, to get rid of consequences and heal wounds, you can start off with, you actually have the ability to start off with less health than you do your main character. So it's not, okay, I finished mission one, I'm just going to go back, go shoot up, and then go back down because I'll be back at full health. No. You went down during mission one, so you get one of these cards. And when you get one of these cards, it counts immediately minus one against your health. So you're starting back with Jazz, she'll start back with seven health instead of eight. Oh, yes. And you can accumulate. You can accumulate, and you can get up to your max health. If you get up to your max health, you cannot leave the ship. You can't go on a mission. Um, you are stuck in the, on healing until, some, until you heal those consequences off of you. And the consequences are what's on the other side of this card. So let's take this card, for instance. Uh, that's an easy one. Tis but a scratch, no effect. So you can go from there to this guy. Badly wounded leg, you suffer minus one speed. So therefore, instead of moving at six, she jazz would move at five. Or, oh, this guy. Cancel every success of your defense rolls, because you're clumsy. 
that's a bad consequence. That means that you're taking more pain than you need to, right? So you got to mitigate that stuff. Because you'll get a consequence if you go down. You'll get a consequence. There's, very, there's many, many ways to get them. You have your, so I'll shuffle, I've been shuffling these up as we've been talking, as I've been talking. You get um, other effects that are added to you as well. You have this stunned effect. You have, these are your state effects. So you have stunned, immobilized, hidden, focused, unfocused, targeted, burning, yes, burning, and blinded. And this card, these cards will tell you what happens on them. And as I get them, I'll walk through. But these are your, these are the states that can happen to you. Loot! That's right, what game is in there without some loot? So basically, as you find things like this chest here or this one here, that you can see these are the 3D printed ones that came with the Kickstarter that I bought. So anyway, you didn't hear any of that. Once you go through there, in the book it tells you how much loot that you get out of there. You pull those cards, you get them, you assign them as you'd like. Um, it's not the, you can't trade rule. No, you could trade, it's fine. You give them to whoever you want and then continue on. So shuffle up this. We're almost there, promise you. Getting you through everything and then the hardest one was going through the characters because each character is so different. All right, the AI. Now you're speaking my language, loot. <laughs> the AI, I need to take a drink of water for this one. The turn order in this game go, doesn't go all players go, then all enemies go. It's just like Deep Madness. Players go, enemy goes. Players go, enemy go. Player go, enemy go. All the way through. So that's the turn, right? And it doesn't matter who goes first out of your players. You can pick anybody. It doesn't matter. That's up to, you. That's up to the team. If it's for you, that's up to you four, who you're going to do. If it's solo, that's up to, that's up to me or you. How, who wants to go first? They don't care. But whoever goes first after they finish, it then goes to the AI's turn. And what happens is there's this deck that's going to be built here. Yeah, it's a little better. There's going to be a deck that's built here. Right now there's just one card because the scenario just has them here. But basically what you do is you take these, you shuffle them up every round, and then you flip them over and it tells you who's going to go, whose turn it is out of the AI to go. So that is the, um, this is the deployed deck. So you, right now it's just Spec Ops, which I'm representing with these purple peoples, meeples, which are the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. So um, because, and I'll get in that second again, the sidetrack. So when you build this deck up, at the start of every round, you're going to shuffle, and then you're going to put them here. You'll go first, then flip over the top card, and it'll tell you which one activates. Also, at the start of every round, you're going to take these cards that are labeled AI, you're going to shuffle them up, and then you're going to put one on every single type, right? Every single unit. Then when their turn comes up, you flip this AI card that looks like this. You flip this AI card, and it tells you if they're at their extreme side, this, they get to do two of these things. If it's on the regular side, it goes to two of those things, right? And these things are outlined, but it tells you what the AI does. Find the creature with the most aggro, kill them, basically. Um, but that's what it, that's basically what it does for their turn. After their turn is done, and let's take a look at one of the AI creatures. Once again, I have prepared you for my tiny table. Uh, do, 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 unit. Oh, come on, don't be bad. I gotta reload the units, don't I? Yep, I do. Unit card. Let me close it for a second. PDFs, fun life. And you know I'm doing this live because this is a pain. Okay. PDFs are all crashing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the PDFs are all crashing. Let me... Let me close this completely down and reopen it. Yep, close all tabs. And we will reopen the PDF. So you can see the unit card. There we go. All right. 
So this is an enemy. There we go. All right, so this is an enemy card, right? Um, this enemy card has five health, which is on the top left. It's a Cadmus uh, unit, five health, six speed on the top right. That hack, you see that symbol that's there? Is there dice rolling? There is a lot of dice rolling, Matt. Lots of dice rolling. <laughs> so when, if I try to hack this unit and it says it's hackable down here at the bottom, so it says the type of creature it is that shots Vasti and, ha and it's hackable. So J if Jazz tries to hack it, it will roll a black die to defend against the hack. Um, it has six movement. If I try to shoot at it, it rolls a blue die to defense against a, 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 a normal attack. So hack attack, black, normal attack defense, blue. Um, this thing that you see here on the left, the one and two, all of these things come in units. There's not like, oh, there's this one guy. No, there are units, and there, there could be up to four. I've seen it. So, but right now, there's two in this unit, and when this unit activates, both of them activate, right? If I kill one, then it's down to one. So what this creature can do, and I'll explain this on the right, is when its turn comes up, its, range is, its movement is six, its range is one to eight, and it's going to get in range. <laughs> I'm uh, lots of dice. I'm doing me playing kill enemy after enemy after enemy. That's the life of kill for. Game over, man. <laughs> I'm gonna live, man. I'm gonna live. So it it has a combat rifle. It's gonna seek you out range one to eight, uh, per the AI's instructions on the card. And it's gonna roll these dice, and it's gonna get an automatic exclamation point. So if it gets another exclamation point, it can use its switch to add one to one success to the roll, and then do that. It also can hack. That's right, it can hack us too, it's not just Jazz. So if it, if, it's, if it wants to hack us and it says, okay, we'll hack the person, then it's gonna roll a, um, a red and blue die. And it's basically on one of these, it will, expose, it will impose the stun state on us. So not only can we hack, but they can hack too back at us. Here's the cool thing about attacking, hacking, and all that stuff. So let's say I'm defending, and I roll a die that basically is a, a success, a shield, and an exclamation point. Now I'm defending, right? And they roll one star against me. That shield will block that, that star. It'll block the success, so I block that one attack. But that star that I got, I attack them back. So I get a hit. You get to defend and shoot back at the same time. So whenever you roll your defense, if you get any successes, they count as a shot back to them. Now, if they roll a star and a shield, right? So if they roll a success and a shield on their attack against you, and you get a shield and a success, they block your hit, and you block their hit, nullifying all the attack. If you just roll one success, they roll a success and a shield. They hit you for one, your shot goes, and they use their shield to block your attack. It'll make sense when we go through the playthrough, but basically, you are giving back what you are attacking at all the time, and they are attacking all the time. Yep, simultaneous combat. That is right, Brian. That's exactly what's happening. On the right side, this symbol that you see here is their um, uh, respawn, I think it was called. I want to make sure I say it right. Because, like I said, I've been super nervous about being wrong. <laughs> so I've read this book like three times. Um, it is their replacement rate, their replacement. So those symbols that you see are um, reinforcement token symbols. So if there is one reinforcement token symbol in the pool, you, the, this creature, this Cadmus, can use that. So let's say there's two units. I've killed one. It comes around to their, it ends the round. At the end of the round, I killed one, round end. There's still one there. At the beginning of the round, it looks in the reinforcement pool and says, oh, there's one there. I'm going to take that one and summon that guy back. And then there is the, the, that's how they respawn for units or reinforce for units. For the three that you see at the bottom, um, sorry, that's replacement, replacement. For the three that you see at the bottom, those are, um, 
uh, those are reinforcement sets. So basically, it says if there are three in the pool, then I can, let's say you've killed the Cadmus, they're dead. So they go into the standby pool, right? And you're accumulating reinforcement points. Well, when there's three in there, they can then take those three and resummon a whole two new sets, fresh new sets of units in the respawn spaces to attack you. So you are never alone. You are never going to be, oh, well, I've killed all the creatures. I could just walk about the facility and feel good about myself. No, because as reinforcement tokens are added, they will respawn and attack you. And it's a way of them showing that units are coming to shoot at you and take you down. Okay? So those are the Cadmus units. We are starting off with the Nox unit. Um, let me see if I could get to the Nox. Oh, let me talk about Red's phase. So, and notice that his... Yeah, so this is blue. This is its base state. When we go to Max Alert, he changes to this guy. He's got seven health now. He's got six. He roll, he's rolling more dice. He's rolling way more dice. And he's inflicting a lot more damage. And there are three of them in those units. So basically, now three of them show up. And they get to roll a lot more dice against you. And it hurts really, really bad. <laughs> and there are different units that are in here, but let's find the ones that I care about. Not you, not you. This Spec Ops is the one I care about for right now. Leaders. These guys. This is who we're going to be facing first when we fight. It's going to be these Spec Ops guys. So there's no, there's no respawn. There's reinforcement count, but no respawn. There's two units, four health, five speed. Um, this is old and outdated. They have, they, they roll two black dice for defense and a yellow and a black die to, def to defend against, um, defense against bullets and to defend against hacking, it's two black dice. But the combat rifle's true. They get one success and they roll these dice and then they do this tactical retreat. When they tactically retreat, reinforcement stuff goes into, they leave the, they leave the board and reinforcement stuff go into the pool. Kanji could save teaching time by just telling us about the failure results. <laughs> oh, Matt, you woo me so much. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so these are the ones that we're going to face to start. Okay. Huh. I've gone through all but one thing left. One thing left. And then we get into the game. Okay. This is important. Very, very important. Because this is something that I need people to be like, I, I've, I've missed this more than once. If an enemy ever, ever, ever rolls this symbol right here, this is a critical success on a defense roll. He nullifies every attack that you do to him. Gone. Period. Bye. Goodbye. If you do this, you either um, nullify every attack or it turns into two successes, uh, two shields for you. So if you say, I don't want to nullify the attack because I want to get the switch, you can then say, okay, I'm going to turn this into two shields instead of one. If they ever roll... If this is ever rolled, this is a critical success. What will happen is you will do two damage, or they will do two damage to you. So one critical success constitutes two damage. Okay? So if the enemy rolls this, it nullifies all of your attack. Nothing, nothing hurts them. If the enemy rolls this or you roll this, two attacks. If you roll this, either nullify their attack, or you get two shields to add to whatever you want. Okay? This is a thing to keep in mind or else you'll forget about it. Forget about it. And I'll go through consoles and stuff when we go through it. Okay. <sighs> I've explained the game to you all as far as you need to know for this first mission. Let's get into it. <laughs> campaign book. And this thing is uh, it's 12 missions in the campaign, um, including the Megalodron attack. You will, for people who didn't back the Kickstarter, not getting the Megalodron, it's okay. They're going to give you a, um, a cardboard cutout, like little flat, flat standee, 
for the Megalodrone, for people who did back it in the Kickstarter, you're going to get a 3D printed model that looks freaking awesome, okay? Which you probably saw in my unboxing video. If you didn't, I have an unboxing video with it in it. All right. I will read all this at the end of so we can get into the game. All right. Yep, there's people to read, there's stuff to do, they're telling you how to go through it. This is the beginning, right? Somewhere in the human sphere, 012 scientific base. Explosion out. Mission one, the extraction. In a 012 science facility somewhere in the human sphere, a chain of explosions echo fiercely through the structure. Comms thunder through the corridors of the complex and your tactical comm logs get splashed with bright red alarms. The facility is under attack. All security forces to your checkpoints. An explosion way too close puts a stop to your hasty race towards your team's checkpoint. While quickly moving through towards your objective, your comm logs receive a top priority notification. Cuervo Goldstein distinctive tenth space fills your visor. The damn Shasvasi are assaulting the facility. This is not a drill. Several modules have been isolated and many VIPs can't reach their transports. They need to get out of there and I don't give a beep regarding how you do it. Pilot Ferreira is aboard the stalker waiting for you in the cargo hold. But, but, the only thing that matters, a good gosh darn heck, he didn't say that, is locating the HVT, high value target. The Sigma Vara Sandar. Get her back to the stalker. I'm sending you to Sigma's last known coordinates. Locate her, sm locate her, Smuggle her to safety on Stalker and get the heck H-E double a hockey sticks out of there. All right, so that's the intro stuff. It tells you instructions of how to build up, which I've built up the decks over here. So this is the um, this is not the avail deployed available. This is the aligned. So these units are going to get used throughout the campaign, so you have them ready. The um, available units is going to be the hacker, which is going to come out. If I have enough uh, to deploy them out, then they'll pop up. All right, and then we prepare console cards one, two, and three. We then say, um, prepare the ally um, Vara Sandar and the ally Agnes Ferreira, ready to go whenever they need to be used. Set the board up, which is what we did. Deploy the game components shown in the graphic, which is what you see here. Um, and then deploy the characters into the deployment space, which is here. All right. The objective: extract sigma. Extract the sigma Vara Sandar alive aboard the stalker. And if you want to know what this this tile here is, actually this ship right here, the top ship on top of the Defiance that gets us here and there. I can see how this will go. Gee whiz, the mother hugging alien blew my arm off. <laughs> it's kid show, man. It's kid show. <laughs> All right, so um, phase one. The central system has locked the security doors. To open them, you need to access the system from the consoles one and two. Damn it. The magnetic clamps haven't been released yet, and Ferris comm logs isn't responding. Something's wrong with the stalker. To release the clamps, you'll need to access the consoles as well. Heat sensors detect an alien presence everywhere. You're surrounded, and it won't be long until they get in. Hurry the heck out. He did say heck. So security doors, boop, boop, can only be accessed by interacting with these consoles. Uh, magnetic clamps can only be released by interacting with the consoles. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So that's phase one, and yes, the game works in phases. So we start off here. I picked the color based on the colors of the characters that are here. So yellow for uh, Quan Giao, uh, green for Caden, blue for Uma, and red for Jazz. So it matches the color. So what you're gonna see is you see them here in their cute little meeples. So yellow, green, and then I put these creatures, which is the Nox Spec Ops, right here in purple. Okay, we get to go first. Oh, first I need to deal an AI card at the start of the round, so it's round one. We shuffle these up, and I deal an AI card, boom. And since there's only one, I don't need to shuffle. Okay, so 
we got a tank that we need to get through to see this guy, and his range is going to be one to five. So one, two, how far are you? One, two, three, four, five. So I need to get here to shoot that guy. And my movement is five. One, two, three, four, five, which will put me perfect. So Dan Gao is gonna move five. One, two, three, four, five. I get two actions. Move, attack, interact, and some other stuff that we'll go through later. <laughs> Act, all that stuff. Okay, stay frosty. Game over, man. Game over. Okay, so now he's going to, because he is, it, he, he hits from range one to range five, so one, two, three, four. Perfect. He's going to pull out the big old and shoot. He gets to roll. He will get one automatic success. Ooh, that's two successes. That would be great if I got that. Which, it, which you represent as this little token here. One automatic success. So I put that in here. And he will roll two blue dice. What else do I get? What else do I get for shooting you in the face? Um, and he gets an orange die because of his heavy weapon mastery. Okay. So I'm going to roll these dice. And... Ooh. I got, ooh, I got like four successes and a shield. Okay. The enemy, though, gets to dodge. So they are going to roll according to their card, which is this, they're going to roll a yellow and a black die because they're defending bullets coming at their face. So they're going to roll a yellow and a black die, which is this. Let me put it over here so you can see a little bit better. So they rolled a blank and a shield. So basically their shield blocks one. I'll say it'll block this one here. So it blocks that. And they get hit with one, two, three. Uh, there's nothing that I can use for a switch. Um, I didn't roll any crits. And you may take... So I've done three damage to this guy. He has four health. So unit number one will take three damage. Which I put over here. They'll take three damage. And that is my two turns. I did one turn to move, one turn to attack. So I will take this, flip it over, he's done. That's it. Done. Okay, then the AI goes. So we, we would usually take this card of a pool of cards, pull the top card off, flip it over, which says that it's the spec ops. So we take their AI card. And we show it. So this is their AI. And since it's on the blue side, it goes here with these symbols. So let's break down what those symbols mean right quick. Because there's a whole breakdown. I've been building a Word document to post on Board Game Geek so people just have all this information. I have it like, I'm up to, I'm, I'm putting as much as I can into it so people will be ready. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Here we go. All right, so. Um, this symbol here says, uh, which one is it? The closed clamp? Acquire target. So it is on, they are range eight. So basically it says acquire target and it would say character with the least damage. So the closest character with the least damage is the first one. Well, they don't have to acquire target because I'm in range. Acquire target means move if you need to. Okay, so they get they have they can skip this step. So then they go down to this one, which is uh, to, to, to attack. So attack the target with the least amount of damage. So basically, this guy now is going to activate, and he's going to shoot him because he's in range. He's going to roll a orange and a yellow die, and he gets one success off the bat. So he gets one success. He's going to roll an orange and a yellow die. He's got two shields, um, a star. Does he have any abilities? Nope, he doesn't. So basically, he's hitting me for two. I get to defend, 
I defend with a blue die. Oh, you didn't even see me roll that. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. <laughs> this is what I rolled. I rolled an uh, a orange. Let's put it back here. There we go. I rolled an orange and a yellow die. This is what I rolled. And for me, I get to roll a blue die to defend. Plus, over here, I get to roll two black dice. So a blue and two black. I get to roll these to defend. Wow, that, that was awful. That was just awful. That was awful. <laughs> so I block one, but one's coming through to hit me. This one star comes through and hits me, so I take one damage. And the one thing I forgot that I need to do, so I take, so he takes one damage right there. And the one thing I forgot is whenever you shoot somebody, whether you kill them or you don't, you get aggro. <laughs> so I got my first aggro when I shot him. Um, and I can have up to eight. So that's the first unit that attacked me. The second unit gets to attack now. The second unit that's here gets to attack now as well because they're part of that. The second creature, uh, the second Nox is part of that unit. So they get to attack as well. So they are going to one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm well within range. So they're going to attack me once again with a success and they roll these two so let's see we've got a shield and a success so they've got two hits on me right now once again i'm going to roll my blue black and black all right this is the thing i wanted to show you all so i rolled a shield and a star so I block one of these attacks, which means one's coming through to hit me, but then I fire a shot back, but he has a shield, so he blocks my shot. So I'm going to take one damage. He's not going to take any. So I'm at two damage of 12. I'm good. I'm all good. So two damage of 12. They have an ability that says tactical retreat. At the beginning of the unit's activation, if only one enemy is there, they will attack and then run away. All right, so they attack me. So that is the end of their turn, right? Next item up for bid <laughs> is going to be uh, Mr. First Strike, who is, his movement is six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can't get to him. He can't get to him, but Jazz can. Jazz has a six movement, and she can hack through walls. And her hack range is, her hack range is two, 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 zero to six. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So Jazz is going to move one, two, three, four, five right here. She's going to move five. She sees that guy through the door. She's going to break out the, 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 um, the, her hacking device, and she's going to use it. So I'm going to hack using Skullbuster. <laughs> Take that in the face. So if you remember Skullbuster, um, Skullbuster says, add a yellow die to the hacking roll. All right. So, and this enemy AI card. Basically. All right, so we are going to attack with a hacking device. We're going to hack that guy, which means we're going to roll a yellow die, and get a free exclamation point. And I'll show you all that when I put this back up. So we're gonna roll a, we got a free exclamation point. We're gonna uh, then ro get to roll an extra yellow die because we're doing Skull Buster, and that's what we're attacking with. You're kidding me. But she has two, so this and this, Allows her to activate her switch that's on here that says um, impose either I can either cancel one shield from the enemy's um, hack defense roll or I can impose the blinded state to their roll. Now they're going to defend against my hack, which they roll two black dice for it. And they got two shields, but I didn't get any damage towards them, so it doesn't matter. But so I'm going to use these two to impose the blinded state on that guy. And the blinded state says, 
Uh, character and enemies. The miniature can only choose adjacent targets uh, for their actions or perform actions that do not re require line of sight. So basically, they can't shoot anyone unless they're adjacent. So he has the blinded effect on him. So that was her too. He moved and attacked. Um, that ends her turn. Then we will go with... I can't do anything. I have to move. I just have to move into the room. That's all I can do this round. So Uma has movement of six. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you would say, hey, you can look through the door and shoot him. No, I cannot. Line of sight, which means nothing can block my path to get to my target. And how they do that in games like um, Descent or they do in Imperial Assault is that you take a corner and you need to be able to draw a line to that unit's, any of that unit's edge without any obstruction. And my character takes up that entire space that it's in. So I can't shoot him. But what I can do, <laughs> and what I will do, is I'm going to spend my next action to move again, which you can. So I'll move again. One, two, three and stop right here. And that will end my turn. Hayden's turn is he's gonna do the same. He's got a movement of six. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Get right up in their face. Uh, actually, no, 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 no. One, two, three, four, five. He'll stop right here. Because that other guy, he'll have to use one of his actions to move. Nope, ain't gonna happen. Okay, so all of us have gone. Uh, we'll flip this over. All of us have gone. Um, no one else attacked except for uh, Kian Gao. So there, oh no, Jazz attacked. So she would get an aggro token. Jazz did attack. So she would get an aggro token. So all of us, all of us went. We're all good. That ends the round. So we move the round tracker to the next round. We check the, um, the pool to see it, the uh, reinforcement pool to see if there's any reinforcement tokens. There aren't any, so nobody knew it's coming. We then flip these over. And we grab an AI card. We reshuffle the AI deck. And then we put a new AI card down. We grab this deck for whatever it'll be, shuffle it up with itself, and then put it there. And then we begin the next round. We go first. So, we go first. Okay. Well, King Gao is going to do what King Gao do. He is going to... Hmm. Actually, I'm going to let Caden go first. Green guy. Caden's going to go first and attack the guy that he's next to. So Caden, first strike, his name is, it's in the name, first strike. So what he's going to do is he's going to roll a orange and yellow. To his combat roll, he gets to add a blue. And... Let's make sure... I can displace and move. I can't perform any hacking. During your activation, add two success to your attack rolls if you have spent movement points during the same activation. Ooh. So just making one attack will do it. Okay. So let's do that. So I get two. So basically, his Berserker charge says during your activation, add two successes your attack rolls if you have spent movement points during the same activation. So instead of using, I could use two turns to attack this guy, or I could move and just get two successes. <laughs> and one attack. Um, I'm gonna do, uh, I just need to hit this guy for four. This dude will run away if I, if I don't. Nope, I'm not gonna do it because I want to displace and then kill him. I don't want him running away. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm going to roll these dice. Uh, come over here. Here. 
that here. And let's see how we strike. All right, so I got some stuff. Okay. One, three. I think I killed him. I think I killed him. Oh my god, I think I killed him. Okay, so I will get one aggro point for attacking him. So let's start that off so I don't forget. One aggro point for attacking. I've got one, two, and then I have a switch that says if I take another aggro, I get to add two successes to my roll. But I can only do it once per roll. So, and I've got another shield. So I'm going to use those two. To use that switch to get two for a total of four. But I'm not done. This guy gets to defend. And he's going to roll two black dice to defend. Right? Oh, you suck. So he basically blocks the two that I took the extra aggro for. Um, he's going to block those two, but he's going to take two attack on him, so he has two damage. So he takes two damage. This is unit number two. And remember my ability. Immediately after you inflict any number of damage during a combat roll, I may displace, and displace means move one. So... After you inflict any number of damage. Ugh, I, was, I was hoping to kill him so then I could go and kill the other guy. But nope. No dice. So he's going to get to run away. I'm going to attack him again. I'm not displacing. Um, I, sh I should have just moved. Then I would have killed him straight out. So <laughs> I'm going to reroll this for my second action. Wow, that was terrible. <laughs> that was straight up terrible. Uh, I got nothing. I got absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, that was awful. He doesn't even need to defend, but he can. Uh, it would have been a block one. So that was a wasted turn. Oh my gosh. Candy rolls, candy rolls, candy rolls. Okay. This turn, uh, the AI's turn now, so we take the AI card and we put it out here. So the AI is going to, they have this up, acquire target. So this guy needs to acquire target, he's blinded. So he's going to move and he's going to attack the character with the least amount of damage. That would be Uma or Kaden. He's closer to Caden, so he's going to move one for his first action. Acquire target with it, and then he's going to attack the target with the least amount. So those are the two that he does, right? So he's going to basically acquire target, attack target. This guy doesn't need to acquire target because everybody's in range. So he's going to attack target, and then he's going to do this next one, which we'll talk about that in a second. So acquire target, attack target. So he's going to attack me. He's going to attack Caden. Uh, and he's going to roll for his attack one auto success, a yellow, and an orange. Wow, this is going to hurt. He's got two, three successes one, two, three. And I, Caden rolls for defense one blue and one black only. So. I block one damage. Um, he will hit me for two, and when I try to hit him back, he blocks it with his shield. So I get hit for two, and he is hunky dory. So that was number one finish, but uh, finished. Find unit, move, and attack. The next guy, he's going to do first. He's going to attack. Uh, the person in within range, the person with the least amount of damage in range, which is Uma. So he's gonna shoot Uma. Yep. So he's gonna shoot Uma. He's gonna get one success. He's gonna attack with this. 
There we go. That's that's better. <laughs> that's better. He just gets one success. Uma to defend. She gets to roll a blue and one black. She gets one success. So she's going to get hit for one. She tries to hit him back, but he blocks it with his shield. So she gets she takes one damage. Oop, that's six. Not six damage. One damage. So she takes one damage on her. Then he's going to do his second action, which is, as you see here, see the symbol here? It says, uh, what is that symbol? Group instruction. Uh, focused. He gets the focus state. By performing instruction in which this symbol appears, every enemy in the unit receives the focus state. So they all get focused. The entire group in the unit, both of them. And Focus says, characters, um, char uh, enemies, the miniature must discard the state roll and add a yellow to their next roll. So basically, they're going to add a yellow die when they attack me next. Cool. And he is going to, he is going to focus on the person with the least amount of damage, which is the last thing. So that's what he does. And that ends their turn. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So let's kill these guys, shall we? Um, Uma's going to go, so you get to see Uma fight. Uma is going to attack. She gets to roll a yellow and a blue. She's equipped, so she gets that. And she gets that. So that's what Uma's fighting with. She gets to, if you're equipped with one or more light weapons, which is the pistol, she gets to add an extra yellow. If her saturation attack says that if she has two light weapons, she gets to add a yellow. And then her weapon attack says that she rolls these two. So that's what she's rolling. So she gets to roll four dice. And she's going to target... Uh, she's going to target this guy. Uh, no, she can't shoot him because uh, Caden's in the way. So she's going to shoot this guy here. She's going to shoot that guy. All right, two successes, three shields, and a blank. But Uma's cool. Uma's cool because she's had this, she had this ability called Trusty. And says, if you quit with two light weapons, add one success for every single blank rolled. Uma is who I would choose. So basically, she has one, two, three successes. And she doesn't have a switch. Nope, I need two exclamations to make it a four. So she's doing three. He's going to defend with a yellow, a yellow and a black. So he blocks one, but he'll block one. So let's say he blocks this one. So he's still taking two damage. Well, he's already taken, he's already taken three. So that kills him. He's dead. He is wiped out. So he is removed from the game. I'll put them over here. And unit one is dead. And that will end. Actually, that was her first go. She's going to shoot again for her second. For her second attack, she's going to shoot again. And she's going to shoot. No, she can't. Arg! He is in the way. Um, he is in the way. Jazz is going to have to hack that guy. So she's going to move one, two, three. He's going to move, I was here, he's going to move one, two, three, come over here. Uh, yeah, and she'll stop there. And that will end her turn. Line of sight, it hurts. Uma is, Uma is always cool. Uma is very cool. I like her character. She is, she's my first favorite and Jazz is my second. So Jazz's turn, she's going to move one, two, three, four, right there for her first action. And then she's going to skull buster that nerd. Um, she's going to roll a yellow, another yellow. Oh, I forgot about her hacker ability. To my hacking rolls, which is what I'm doing, I would add an orange. I missed that last turn. I told you, there's a lot to keep track of. So she's going to do that. She's going to add a yellow, an orange dice for her hacker roll, which you can see here. I would add an orange die. And then a yellow and an exclamation. 
and then another yellow. So this is what she's rolling. So she's going to hack that last guy to try to kill him. Oh my gosh, give me a break. Okay, so he's going to roll a yellow and black. So I would, I would have... All I'm really doing is canceling a shield. I can't do blinded since he's blinded already. <sighs> this just hurts. Okay. So that ends Jazz's turn. Yang Gao's turn. He's got a movement of five. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. And he's in line of sight to shoot this guy. Come on, Ken Gao. Kill him. Kill him. I blow two blue and I get a success and an orange. So I get a success. I roll two blue and an orange. Two successes, plus I know I got a switch. I know I got a switch in there. Uh, yes, I do. The two shields I can use to add one success. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. So I got one, two, three, four. I got four successes. What you got, dude? Nothing. Take four to the face, and he's dead. <laughs> and he is dead. So he dies. Oh, he didn't get the runaway. That made me happy. <laughs> okay. So let me make sure. Yes, rule book. Uh, aggro. To make sure he doesn't get another aggro token. Uh, aggro. Character gains one aggro if, during their activation, they inflict at least one damage to an enemy. So, and Gal did get an aggro. Um, Caden with G with Uma got an aggro. And that's it. Yep. That's it. Cool, and that will end his turn. So we killed them all. We killed them all! Now, here goes the reinforcement cost. So a reinforcement gets added to the pool when an entire unit is eliminated. So when I've eliminated, I've eliminated an entire, entire unit, so there's no one left. As soon as they're eliminated, a reinforcement token, which is this guy here, gets added to the reinforcement pool. These will go back because there's no longer focus. They're dead. So a reinforcement gets added there. Okay. They showed their initiative card. So this is how it stacks up. If, a un if an entire unit is eliminated, reinforcement token. If at the end of the round, a unit never got to go because you completely like steamroll them, aggro token. <laughs> um, if a unit retreats, aggro token. Um, at the end of the activation, I need to compare, and then that'll let me know how much more aggro. So there's just one right now. Okay. Oh, and at the start of the round, that there's no units that, that activate, aggro token. So um, we go through, we got here, we killed them, we're like, <sighs> So now it's, um, we check, we check aggro to make sure that it, it doesn't over, go over to add, um, add reinforcement tokens. We're good. We look at the enemy, or do they have anything that needs to happen? Nope, we're good. They add AI and all that. That ends the round. Round three. We look at, there's no enemies to activate. Reinforcement token. One more, and the Nox Spec Ops is coming back. So, on that first go, we need to get Jazz to this terminal to pop that thing open. So, Jazz is going to go first. Let's flip these back over. Jazz is going to go first, and she's going to move her space to get over here. Uh, one, two, three, four. So, she's right here in front of the console. And she's going to use her action to, um, to pick lock, to basically hack in. So she's going to use this die. She's going to use... Add one yellow to the hacking roll of your hacking device when you interact with the console. 
Once per hacking roll, you may reroll. Oh, I could have rerolled debugger when I was missing on the hacking. And I do this on every of my hacking rolls. I get to use a yellow due to my ability. Uh, that's it. All right. So hacking. This is the fun part that I get to tell you about. So we'll put this over here. We'll put this over here. And then let's. All right. So this is the console that I'm going to be hacking. And to hack, what I need, and I'll put these in space so you can see, I need to roll that combo Come on, where are you? That or this. So basically, there are three segments of hacking, right? I can roll all of them in my dice roll here oh, oops, with these dice, and everything will be cool. Then I'll just do it. So one dice roll, that's all I get. I get a reroll because of, because of Jazz's ability. But when I roll, if I roll a shield and explanation, uh, explain, an exclamation, then I unlock that trigger. If I get a star with that, I unlock that trigger. If I get two exclamations, I unlock that trigger. So this is what I'm hacking. So Jazz's turn is to hack this through. And I get one reroll on my hacking attempt if it's blank. Good grief. Uh, once per hacking, you may reroll any die that is rolled a blank face. So I'm going to reroll these two. Oh, God. Okay, so she got a star and one exclamation point. Well, she hacked this guy, so this slides all the way over. And yeah, you don't have to do one, two, three. It's just how much, however you do it. So when I hack that, magnetic clamp A releases, which is this one here, oh, which is this here. So we flip this over to say that it's been released. And that's all I can do. <laughs> Um, but what I can do now is, so that was her activation to do move and get there. Can Gao and Uma can also interact with consoles. They just have to be adjacent to it. So Kian Gao is going to activate move and he only activates with one blue die. This is all he rolls, right? So this is all he's going to roll. Hey! <laughs> Look at that! So he's got, he's got a um, shield and an exclamation point, which unlocks this. And when that opens, security door one opens, read security door open. So this is security, this is security door one, ah, which is this guy, and you love the paint minis. So this opens up, and it says read security door one. Security door open, sorry. Uh, where are we? Huh. Okay. Oh, that's why they reprinted it, because it's a mess up. So let's go to here. Open. And we'll open the mission. One. Here we go. Let me share this so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so this tells us what's going on. Initial alert red. We did phase one. Console one. Security door. We did that hacking ability. Security door one open. So security door one opens. Alert level moves forward one position. So we move the alert level to two, and I'll read to you what happens then. Add one uh, reinforcement token to the reinforcement reserve. Ugh. Okay. And go to phase two. So in phase two, deploy. <laughs> we're deploying some units. So phase two, we're going to deploy some stuff. We're going to deploy the Nox leaders on the specific spaces that it says. 
We're going to deploy Cadmus on the space that it says. We're going to place uh, Varazandar in a specific space. Agnes is going to go in a specific space. Uh, Agnes is a neutral character. She becomes an ally after interacting with her, which I'll talk to you about. So we're going to be setting all this up, right? I want you to be very aware to download this doc because what's in the book is wrong. Yeah, it is so jacked up. So we need to do this proper. All right, let me read this out as you look through there. So we have those uh, Shasvasi, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry, Infinity guys. Trash has, <laughs> that Sosvashi trash has taken Pilot Fierov prisoner. If you want to leave, you'll need to either rescue her or enter the automatic takeoff sequence code from the stalker's console. So she's been taken prisoner, she is being captive, and we need to help her. So let's do some setup. So we've got, deploy the Nox leader on space, the space which is the Nox leader, which is here. Okay. So there are two Nox guys here and here, and Agnes, which is, this is her token, which I'll show, uh, oops, over here, this is Agnes. She is going to go here, and she's been taken prisoner. So they're holding her in our stalker as we're running back to fix whatever we got to fix. So this door is now permanently open. You cannot close open doors. It's open forever. Deal with it. Okay, so um, then those are the two Nox leaders. So we get the Nox leaders cards, which are here, right? And we put them out. They are there. Um, that's going to represent them. There are two units. That's why I put two there. There are two units. They hurt pretty bad when they hit. Um, we are then going to... Uh, enemies of this unit cannot leave the stalker's tile in any way. Then we deploy the Cadmus units. Cadmus is going. So orange is going to be the Cadmus colors. Because there's Nox and Cadmus. There's a whole race of people in this game. A whole and another. One's going here. One's going here. And we grab the Cadmus. So we take the Cadmus tile, put it over here. We grab the Cadmus and the Nox leaders initi uh, initiative cards, put them there. Okay. We get uh, lovely lady uh, Sigma that we're looking for. This is her. We put her uh, place in the space that she's going to be placed. She is here. Behind that door. Stop. Don't open that door. Uh, let's see. She is neutral until we get her. Then I'll tell you about how she works because she has abilities too. Um, Agnes is going in that space where she belongs. Um, Vara, when interacting with Vara, follow these instructions. Yep, 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 yep. Um, Agnes, when interacting with Agnes. If both clamps were released. Okay, so basically with Agnes, once both clamps are released, if she is still there, then um, she takes off the ship. If she is not there, then we need to interact with the console to take off and get the heck out. And that is where we start off. So, one of the clamps is shut off. We need another clamp. We need to, our mission objective is Sigma, so we need to get the Sigma to get her out. Here's the crazy, crazy, crazy. I've I've played this mission, so I've got so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know something that you're not aware of. If you open this door without rescuing her, they kill her. <laughs> she is very important to this to this uh because she is also an ally that we that we get that flies the ship, the Defiance. She's our pilot. So you can lose her if you want. You'll just be down a character, and she has abilities of her own. But that's what's going to happen. So if I get to this console and open this door, she's dead. If I kill these two guys, then she's okay. Okay? So keep that in mind when you play the game. 
rescue her first. <laughs> or else or else she will she will she will be hurt. Uh which is everything I needed to do. Okay. So console two and console three. So this is console three. This is console three. This is console two. So the console two, one will open up the secure uh, one success opens up the security door, the other one unlocks the clamp, and then we just need to hot foot. Basically, at that point, once we unlock this door, get this character, then go to this, then unlock this clamp, or however order we do it, the, the thing to do next is hot foot it into the defiance. And if no enemies are in the stalker, we're out and we win. Okay? Yeah, it's a spoiler. Sorry. But for people who are going to play the game, there's stuff like, this is, this is the choose-your-own-adventure path that can either work for or against you. I only know because the first time I played, I did that and they killed her. So I'm letting you know if you play the game, keep her alive. But there are other scenarios in here um, that I've been told that makes you make decisions like that to where you can, a crew member can die if you choose poorly, okay? So you have to think about what you're going to do. Once again, more strategy, line of sight strategy, aggro mitigation strategy, 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 keeping people alive, choose your own adventure strategy. Three things that are in this game that I haven't seen in other dungeon crawlers. Okay. Ha. <laughs> All right. So they came out. Um, this is at the end of the round is when the spec ops are going to respawn. So we're not there yet. But they came out. Uh, they don't deploy until the end of the round. They don't deploy. Oh, wait. I open the door. They deploy. It's happening. It's real. <laughs> Okay, so they're just holding her captive right now. Oop. So we shuffle up the AI cards. If one and one. Now there should be three cards in the initiative deck, but we're gonna pull out the spec ops because they are dead. And now there's two, so we shuffle these up. Put them down. And now, uh, Kian Gao went, that unlocked these. I'm probably not going to go for that third one, which is fine. But he, Kian Gao went, so that's the end of his turn. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. So now it's the Nox turn. Or whose turn is it? <laughs> it says the Nox turn, because like, like I know. The turn up is the Nox leader. I wasn't wrong. So you pull this over, the Nox leader is going to activate. So the Nox Leader AI says, Oop. acquire target. And the target is going to be, I don't know why I closed this book. Why did I do that? Well, I got to find this thing all over here. It is. Uh, it is character with the highest aggro. So it's going to try to acquire the target with character with the highest aggro. And they cannot leave um, the, the Nox Leaders. They cannot leave the ship because they're guarding her, basically. So they're going to try to acquire target of the person with the highest aggro. And the person with the highest aggro is either Kian Gao or Caden First Strike. When it's that case, you get to pick who. So they're going to move one, two, while staying in the ship. And their range is um, one to eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, can't shoot me. Then they're going to attack person with the highest aggro. Can't attack person with the highest aggro. Can't. Uh, so they're done. The next one's going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. And they're basically going to wait to shoot me. And that ends their turn. That's all they can do. Uh, at the beginning of this unit's activation, if there is only one enemy of this unit remaining on the table, all add one reinforcement token to the reinforcement reserve. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And they hurt. They hurt bad. If there are at least two Nox units deployed, every Nox gains the switch. Um, double exclamation, add one success to the roll. If there are at least three Nox units deployed, every Nox adds a shield. 
This is why we have to mitigate damage. Uh, um, alert. And alert level 2 says, when alert level 2 is up, let's see what bad things happen. Uh, at the end of each round, before checking which units can respawn, add one reinforcement token to the reinforcements reserve. At the end of the round. So that's happening soon. So, who's next? Uma. Uma is going to go next. Um, Uma is going to use one action to search this device. And in that device, there are two, two items. So we take this, and I shuffle it up before, but we're going to shuffle it up again. And we're going to take two items, one, two, and this is what we got. We got. What we got? We got a grenade. <laughs> um, basically, as an action, I could throw the grenade. Select the space in range one of one to three for me, and roll a yellow die, an orange, sorry, an orange die, and one get one success. All characters and enemies on that space and the adjacent spaces suffer one damage for each success obtained. Then discard this card. So I got a grenade, and I got a med kit. Um, as an action, first aid. Discard this card to heal up to six health from a character, uh, except remotes, in range, zero to two. The heal character receives a consequence. Ugh. Uh, or assisted reanimation. Discard this equipment card to recover a character from unconsciousness, in range, zero to two, and heal them for eight health. The, uh, the treated character receives a consequence. So, cool. So basically, I'm going to give this grenade. Caden's a close combat guy. I'm going to give it to Caden first strike. And that's going to go in his inventory. The med kit, I'm going to give to. I'm going to give to King Gao. So he'll get the med kit. <laughs> Catch a grenade for ya. <laughs> so that ends, um, that ends, uh, well, that was Uma's first action, actually. That doesn't end her turn. So that's her first action. So we get rid of this. This is gone. We've used that up. Uh, her second action. She's going to get shot if she goes anywhere. Hmm. Uh, her second action. What actions can they do, you ask? Oh, let me answer that for you. Let me answer what actions they can do. They can move. They can attack. They can hack. They can equip. They can interact. Or they can take a special action. Um, she is going to... I haven't thrown Billy out yet because if you... Because Billy can get destroyed, and if it gets destroyed, I need to spend resources to get it back. Like, it doesn't come back at the beginning of. I need to fix it. So, I'm not ready to throw Billy out yet. I will on the next round, though. Um, Uma, Uma, Uma. Oh, my goodness. What are you going to do? You can get shot up really bad. Because um, the Cadmus is going to roll. Ow. Um, hmm. What would you do, girly? You're gonna get shot if I take you in. We'll get shot. <laughs> and you've only got eight health. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. So Uma's gonna move in there. This space here, I know you can't see it really well. Sorry about the crappy camera. Um, but this space is a dotted yellow space. That means that dotted yellows don't obstruct line of sight, but they cost two movement to get through them. So um, it would be like two, three, four, five here. So she'll move here. And that'll end her turn. 
The next activation is, uh, we know it's the Cadmus. So the Cadmus activates, and on their activation, um, they are going to acquire target of character with the least damage. So the character with the least damage is Jasmine. <laughs> so they're going to move to acquire her. They move uh, six feet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, they can see her through that door. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. And his second action is going to be to attack the target with the lowest aggro. The person with the lowest aggro is either Uma or Jazz. Um, I mean, Uma's right there. Sorry, girl. You need to take that shot. So it's going to attack Uma, or it's going to get an exclamation. A orange die and a yellow die, and they've got switches that hurt. Uma is going to defend with a black and a blue, and that's all she's defending with. Black and a blue. All right, so they roll first. Oof! Oh no! So they got three successes on Uma because it's one, two, and then those two together triggered their switch, which is three successes. They got three successes on Uma. Ooh, girl. Ah. Okay. <laughs> so I rolled a shot and I roll a shield. So I block one, which means I take two, two hits. So she's taking three damage, but she fires a shot back that they didn't block and they're going to take a damage. Now, you're going to say, well, she gets an aggro for that, but no, she doesn't. When you defend roll a shot back, you don't take aggro. That's the only time you don't take aggro. So that is the first one that went. The second one's turn now is going to move the same. One, two, three, four, five six and it can only see uma oh no uma might be going down <laughs> so it's gonna get exclamation and these two uh so it's gonna get one success two successes on a block uma's gonna roll her black and so she fires but so she blocks one one of them so she's gonna take one damage so she's at four and she's going to fire one back, but it's going to block it with a shield. So, yeah. that happened. And that ends where they are and how they attack. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Ken Gao already did his stuff. He moved and then he interacted with Punkful. So, uh, Caden First Strike is next. Yeah, this is happening. So uh, he's going to move one, two, three, and he's going to cut this dude's face off. So um, he's going to attack this. He's going to attack. Um, oh, I want to throw that grenade. Oh, I want to throw that grenade. <laughs> As an action, I can throw the grenade, uh, but it could be bad. Um, I'll say that I'll just do the Ripper attack. I'm gonna hang on to the grenade for just a second. So, um, he's gonna roll a yellow, a orange and a yellow, a blue, and because he moved during his, um, his, uh, Berserker charge, he moved, so he gets two automatic successes onto attacking, um, the orange guy there. So he's got two successes. He's going to roll these dice. Having the Betsy, let me do well. Hey, hey, hey. So he's got four damage. These things have five health. So he's got four damage on it. Does a shield do anything for you, good man? No, it does not. So four damage. They are going to roll to defend with one blue die. That's all they get. 
So you block one, so let's say it's that. You're gonna take three to the face. So you take three damage number number one. So you're at four. Uh, you're at four damage. I get an aggro token. One more and that's bad. So I get an aggro token. And then I will displace because I did damage. I'll move one right here. So that somebody could come out and kill this foolishness. All right. Now let's talk about the fun of this. So everyone has gone. All the enemies have gone. So then we go into the next round. Well, round four. The next round, remember, before anything else, because of the level two attack, one goes into here before we check. Then we check, and we have three that we can spend. One, two, three. So we spend three, and the spec ops is uh, coming back out and getting shuffled in. So the spec ops is coming back. Excuse me. And they are going to spawn. That's not spec ops. So there's spawn points that are in the book for where they spawn. And they are going to spawn R1, R2, R1 respawn point. So R1, they are going to spawn right here. So both of them spawn right there. And that's how they pop back out on the board. Hey, look, it looks a little bit more overwhelming. Uh, we take the AI cards. We shuffle them up. Oh, actually, they wouldn't. They would not. Oops, I screwed up. The Spec Ops wouldn't come back. The Spec Ops are at the bottom of the pool. The hacker's at the top, so the hacker's come out. Not the Spec Ops. All right, let me explain that for a second. So whenever you take out a unit, there's a pool. Remember that there's the deployed pool, which is these guys here. There's the available pool, people waiting on the reinforcement reserve to build up so they can come out. And then there is the get these people will be introduced in the story pool, right? Whenever I kill an enemy, I will take their card and I put it at the bottom of the um, available pool. So the next up in that pool was the Nox hacker. I spend those three, the hackers come out. And there's two of them, and yeah, they, they're called hackers for a reason. They 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 called hackers for a reason. <laughs> Alright, so we'll shuffle this up. AI cards. And then we deal AI. We then get these three, which consists of the hackers, the Cadmus, and the leaders. We shuffle these up. So everybody's going different every next time. So think about this like Gloomhaven's where you shuffle in the initiative. That's what this is. It's like that. Take that, put those down. Then we flip these back over. Any beginning around effects? Nope. So we are ready to dance. Dance, dance. All right. So we go first. Always, always. Uh, who's going to go first? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go first? Caden can move, attack. Ugh, I want him to throw that grenade. <laughs> they have four health, too. Um, hmm. I think Uma should probably go first. Arcane Gal. Arcane Gal go move into the room and blast that dude in the face. Yeah, he's going to do that. Uh, Ken Gao is going to go first. He's going to activate first, and he's going to move one, two, three, four, right here. And then... So he's going to roll um, two blues, 
get one success automatically and a yellow. And once per action, when you inflict any damage to an enemy, you may take a aggro from a character and place. You may take an aggro from a character and place it on yours, which I'm going to do that. Uh, yep, I'm gonna do that. All right, so let's get to a Roland. So he gets one success. He's attacking the guy straight in front of him. One success. Can I do anything with that exclamation? Oh, I can with the two shields. I can make a two success with the two shields. Yep, 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 yep. So I'm going to, so I got two successes, three successes. I got three successes on that guy. He's only rolling, this is the Cadmus. He's only going to roll one blue die to defend. So he blocks one, so he's going to take two to the face. Uh, and that's unit number one, which kills him. So he dies. Removed. I get an aggro token. And I'm going to pull an aggro token once per action off of Caden First Strike onto myself. And that will end my turn. So let's see which enemy is going first. It's going to be the Nox Hacker who's going to go first. The Nox Hacker's AI card says, now that you've seen me jump all about, I can just read off and keep rolling. So the Nox Hackers, which are here, are going to say, uh, one, let's see, acquire target of character with highest aggro. That is Kian Gao, which is perfect. Goodness, I pulled that off. And then they're going to attack the person with the highest aggro. So they've already acquired the target. They don't need to move. So they're going to attack him t basically four times. Because their range is eight. At the beginning of the unit's activation, if there's only one enemy of this unit remains on the table, ignore all AI cards and perform the instruction, attack the nearest character, and retreat. So they're going to just do a straight-up attack. Um, Okay, so they get a success and roll two yellow die for the combat rifle. So that's and target the target receives the stun state. Oh no, that's hacking. They're just attacking. They're not hacking. So that's all they get. So they get two successes. He's going to roll a blue and a black. Black. Blue and two blacks. Uh, one success. So he blocks one. He takes one damage. They're going to do it again. Okay, so just one. More than enough, and he strikes back, hitting them for one. So he hits unit one who attacked. And now unit two. Nothing but a shield. Well, one success. He got another attack back, but he's going to take a damage. He takes one. They take one. That's unit two. And then unit two is going to attack again. Um, two shields, two successes. I just need to get two shields. Come on. One shield, one success. I'm going to take one. He's going to block the other one coming back to him. So you see the game's moving. I'm moving a little bit faster now because you see how this is working. Cool. So that ends their activation. So they attacked him a lot. And he lucked out. <laughs> so that ends. He went. He's done. Um, that ends their activation. So now it is... Uh, all right, my turn next. Um, I could get Uma to just start blasting or Caden to kill that Cadmus because it hasn't gone yet. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get Caden to go first. So Caden's going to go first. He's going to go now. He's going to attack this guy straight up, um, rolling a yellow. 
Yeah, because then I get to displace and I'm throwing a grenade. Because <laughs> I'll move here and then throw it right here, which will hit those two. So um, he gets to roll this, this, a blue. Where's first? He's just going to attack that guy. Uh, number one, six. Cade's gonna go first. Interesting stuff. So Caden, 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 what can you do? You could spend these two. You gain one aggro to add two successes to your roll. Yeah, dang, Skippy, I'm gonna do that. So he's gonna add one aggro. So he's got two that he's adding to the roll for the two exclamations plus two four. He's doing four damage to this guy. Who only rolls one blue and he rolled nothing so he takes four damage to the face he already had one which is still enough he only had four health so he's dead so when they die you take you put it at the bottom of this uh they already went but he gets uh he got his he gets an aggro token for wounding that guy so that's his first action Oh boy, it's gonna turn into a reinforcement token, but I don't care. He's going to displace because he can. He's gonna move here, here. So that's his first action, attack, kill that guy, then displace. Then he's gonna throw the grenade for his second action. Uh, it has to be one to three spaces away, one, two, three. So I'm throwing it right here and everybody in the area is gonna take some pain. So basically I'm throwing the grenade, discarding it. I get one success and roll this. So everyone's taking one damage, and that is the. Oh, oops, I put the wrong person out. <laughs> it was these guys that got knocked out, the Cadmus. And they never got to attack. They never got to use their AI card, so a reinforcement goes in the reinforcement pool. I was putting it on the wrong guy. The Nox hackers are here. So. He's going to throw the grenade at them. So two successes. <laughs> so uh, it says grenade. Uh, select an area. All characters and enemies on that space and the adjacent space suffer one damage for each obtained. Discard this card. So this get discarded. Get back into the pool. Uh, Let's see if on item cards, if they get to dodge or not. Thematically, it seemed like they would be able to, but I just want to validate. Uh, item cards. So they didn't get a grenade last, but the other times I played, I got stuff that boosted me to help me out. <laughs> but let's see. Uh, item cards, item cards, item cards. Oh, and these abilities that I got here, these one, these specials that are here, those are only given to you if you play the campaign. If you play solo mission, you don't get them. You have to work to get them, not that you don't get them. Um, it doesn't say. It does not say. It just says that they suffer. I think it's like true damage. It's just a grenade. You're not dodging it. Uh, item cards. Item cards. Or loot. Loot, page 35. Uh, that's all it says. Loot! <laughs> really? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it doesn't say. It just says they suffer damage. I watched the playthrough of um, uh, Corvus Belly playing this, and when they did use a grenade, it was true damage. It wasn't anything that they could dodge. So they're both going to take two damage. But if you see different, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. All right, so we go here. Here, they both take two. And that ends Caden's turn. The next up on, next up for bat would be the Cadmus. They are dead. <laughs> Cool, but they are dead. They don't get pulled out. Just dead. So um, they're dead, so it's my turn again. 
yes, that's how it works. I, I thought that was silly too. It's like, why not just pull them out and let the next person go or pull the next one? But nope, that works. Um, then they get pulled out at the end of the round and then you reshuffle what's not in there. All right, so I'm gonna let Uma go next and she's gonna shoot him. She's gonna shoot this guy here. Um, Uma gets an orange, a blue, a yellow, and because of light weapons ability, another yellow. So, and her blanks count as successes. I can't see the busy crying. I got the, ooh, I'm so sorry, Steven. That's a whole heaping pile of trash, but she's got two and one, so she's done two damage to that guy. He gets to defend with a black and yellow, black and yellow. So I've done two damage to him, and I got a shield. He fires back. Uh, voice is cracking. <laughs> he fires back. Um, he fires back with one, but I block it with my shield. That doesn't mean anything, so he's going to take two damage, which is enough to kill him because he already suffered two damage from the grenade. So unit number one is dead. Then she's going and she'll gain an aggro. Then she's going to do it again to unit two. Oh my gosh, that is what I am talking about. This is this is the best thing that ever happened. And let me roll their defense first so I can break it on down on, on how awesome this is. They don't block anything. Those guys are eradicated. And let me tell you why. I've got one, two, three successes, right? Then I spend these two to make it four. And then I got two more for my other gun to make it five. <laughs> so I shot him for five. I filled him full of lead. And he's dead. He didn't block anything. He just dies. So the hacker is removed and added to the bottom of the available queue. Um, and Uma gets, she was shooting the units, so she doesn't get another aggro. She just got an aggro when she inflicts damage on the unit. So she did. She got her aggro, she doesn't get another one. They're dead. Oop. Okay. One of them's coming back. So we're gonna have to move, move, move. Hustle, hustle. The next one's gonna go, well, we know it's the leaders. We know it's the Nox leaders. And their AI card says that they are going to, uh, let me get rid of this. Their AI card says that they are going to acquire target of person with uh, most, with least damage. So, they, do they need to acquire target? Their range is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, they got targets. Well, for the person with the least amount of damage, yeah, they got a target. They're going to attack the person with the least amount of damage and they're going to withdraw the enemy performs a move action and spends as many movement points as needed to increase speed their distance away from the target so they're actually being pretty thematic they see that their enemy their friends are getting decimated they're going to shoot the person with the least damage of what they can see which is going to be Caden Caden uh He's obstructed by this thing. Let me see. Can I draw a line? Not from this guy. He can't leave the ship. So he would move here. And now he can draw a line. Nope, that's obstructed. Uh, even if he was here, he can't hit anybody. Uh, no, he can hit Uma. Ooh, he can hit Uma. Uh, okay, he can hit Uma. So he's going to roll two yellow and has a success. And then he's going to withdraw. Yeah, yeah, but Uma might be going down. <laughs> so he's got two successes. He's got three successes because as a squad leader, if there's at least two Nox units deployed, Oh, units. Nope, there's not anymore. There's only one. So he doesn't get attack. He doesn't get access to the switch. So he's got two instead of three successes. She's going to roll her blue and black. 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, she blocked them all. She blocked both attacks. Oh. Whew. Okay. And then he's going to withdraw. So he said he'll use all his movement to get away. He'll be here. Um, then the next one's going to do the same attack. So one success. Uma's got one block, so she blocks that success. And then he's going to withdraw. Oh my goodness. Okay, so he withdrew. They both withdrew from the door. Uh, they said as far as they can to withdraw, so they'll both move back here. Back to their hostage. Oh boy. Okay, Jazz's turn. Okay, uh, this AI card will go here. That already happened. Already. Okay, Jazz is going to move. Um, so she's going to get into the position. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's going to deploy Billy for free. And now Billy has stuff he can do, which is cool. Billy can move eight. Billy can, he has four health. He can get five aggro. He can uh, roll a green die to hit somebody. And on a shield, the target gets stunned. <laughs> So uh, she, that was her first action. Billy comes out for free, um, but that's her first action. Uh, let's see. What can she do? You three need to get in there and save her so I can pop this door and get out of here. Um, she and Billy are going to move in this room. So one, two, three, four, five. And he'll move one, two, three, and stand right there. And yes, he activates as soon as he comes out. So that is going to end that. She's not touching that. She's not touching the console, but she's in place for when the time comes. Okay. At the end of the round, there is AI. There is people there, so I don't add one. The round goes to five. Before we check, we add, because of the alert level two, there's three. Pull these off. And Spec Ops comes off the top for three, getting deployed. Two Spec Ops units, Nox, gets deployed here. Uh, yes, here. Does Cadmus get deployed over here? So they get deployed there. Okay. Then we shuffle up the AI. Jaws dropped. Decent. <laughs> you missed Kanji actually got a decent roll. <laughs> I did. I did. I did get a decent roll. And now I'm going to murder these guys. Oh my gosh. So, ugh. Jazz is just going to hang out. We got to clear the stalker. That's all we have to do. We got to clear it, then she can pop the door. So, um, Hayden, I'm probably going to have him come in here and start hacking these guys up. I'm going to have these two hot foot it down here and start blasting those dudes. Okay. AI, shuffling up, shuff, shuffling up AI. One, two. Then we check in here for what's available. Uh, the leaders are there, the Cadmus and the hackers are gone, but the Spec Ops is there. We add them, shuffle them up. Oh boy. I can open the door, but I don't want to lose her. Like, I can win this now, but I don't want to. Okay, so we're there. Um, he's flipped back over. Check for any starting round things that happen. Nothing happened. These three get spent. Back. Okay. Me first. His name is First Strike for a reason. Uh, wait, how can they move? They can move six. Four, five, six, get her here. Him, one, three, four, five. Or 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Kanga has five damage on him. She has four, so they're both about half, half mid road. Um, Hayden's okay. Can they deal with these and you just move? One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't get into enough position to start ripping at them. I have to spend both my actions to do that. What to do, what to do, what to do. If I could just get one of them in this doorway, I can start shooting these guys. But I can't. Um, uh, let's just say, immediately after you inflict any number of damage, during a combat roll, you may displace. And this was, I could, um, during your activation, add two if I move. So Kane's going first. Because that could bring these fools out if they're on top of here. And he's going to move one, two, three, right here, right in your face. Because he moved, he gets two successes automatically on his Berserker charge. And then he's going to attack with a yellow, a, sorry, an orange, a yellow, and a blue. All right, so let's do this. So he's got two. Caden's going to rippers. So he's got, oh, ooh, I've got good things, good things. Um, I can add one aggro, which will turn into a reinforcement point to add two more damage onto this. You darn skippy, I'm doing it. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, he's going to murder this guy. Um, so I'm going to take one because, so I've got four successes. And I could use these two to turn them into six successes because I want to kill that guy. I mean it. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take an aggro point. Now this, I'm going to take an aggro point. Let, we're going to walk through it slowly together so you understand what's happening. I'm going to put the aggro point on him. And then at the end of the round, we'll deal with the rest, okay? So I took an aggro point to add two more because of my two exclamation points. Success. So that's two, four, five, six damage. He gets to roll. He is a Nox Spec Ops. He gets to roll a yellow and a black to try to stay safe. He rolled two blocks, which is what I was hoping for. So he rolls two blocks, which blocks these two that I added, but he still takes two, three, four damage, which is how much his health is. He dies. So he dies. I get an aggro token for hitting. Like I said, I want to take it slow so you can see the pots, so you can see how this works out. And that is Caden's turn. Caden ripped the face off that guy. So he kills him. Okay, that ends Caden's turn. We remove the guy who he killed. Now it is the AI's turn. It's going to be, please be the leaders. It's the Spec Ops guys, darn it. So the Spec Ops guy, guy, singular. Um, AI card says that he's going to acquire the target, but he doesn't need to because play target rich environment. And he's going to attack the character with the highest aggro, which is Caden. And he's going to do it twice. So he's going to attack Caden twice. He's going to roll a yellow and an orange, and he gets a success. And he's going to basically roll that to attack him twice. Caden's going to roll a blue and a black to keep himself safe. So he gets this. We're going to roll these two. He just gets one success. Caden rolls a blue and a black. Nothing. So he's going to take one damage. And then he's going to do it again. Ooh, three. Three damage incoming. Come on, give me something. Give me something. Three damage incoming. I'm going to take three to the face. So he's at. He's at six total, and his uh, health is ten, so he's got four more to go before he's hurt. But he did one damage back to the guy. So that guy's going to take a damage. 
Alright. That ends that AI's turn because there's only one of them. And it says tactical retreat at the beginning of the unit's activation. If only one enemy of this unit remains on the table, ignore the AI car. Oh. Oh. I should have read that. I didn't read that properly. He wouldn't have taken the six. It said ignore the AI card because there's only one of this unit remaining, which there is. So he would just have, have three on him uh, instead of six. Nope, he would have two because he took one the other time. He would only have two on him. Two, sorry. And it says, um, at the beginning of the unit's activation, if only one enemy of this unit remains on the table, ignore the AI card and perform the following instruction. Attack once, which was the first attack that he just completely whiffed, and then retreat. So he retreats off the board, runs away like a coward, and, but when he runs away, we add a reinforcement token to the pool. So he attacked me and ran, because he was like, ah, oh, and then he ran away. So he's gone. They retreat, go back into the available pool at the bottom, and his AI card, we ignore the AI card so we don't care. So Caden wouldn't have taken that massive amount of damage. <laughs> he's single, waka waka waka. <laughs> All right, so that ends his turn. Next up, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, next up, we got auto med kit, so we're gonna be good. So I'm going to have, Big Man's got five on him, huh? I'm gonna have Big Man move, he only moves 10, he doesn't move six. Yeah, he's gonna move though. So he's gonna move, both his actions are gonna be movement to get into that ship. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got line of sight blocking. So he's going to go there, and that's going to end his turn. Then the final AI is going to be the Nox leader, who is going to do a... So one of them is going to do an attack, gain focus state for everybody. Let's take it in order. Unit one, and you have to designate what's one and two. One, two, okay? One, two. Unit one is going to uh, find the target with the least damage on them, which is Jasmine. So they're going to search for Jasmine. One, two, three, four. They're coming here. They can't see her. Then they are going to attack the target with the least amount of damage of who they can see. So it's going to be the least amount of damage is Caden. So he's going to shoot Caden. <laughs> so he's going to roll two yellows and have one success. So he has one success and roll two yellows. So he's got two successes. He doesn't, because there's not another squad, he doesn't get to make that another success. So he gets two successes. Caden rolls a blue and a black. He rolls, so he blocks one. He fires back, but they block it, so he's going to take one damage. So Caden now is at three. Okay. Then, um... Then, 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 then. So that was his two. He moved to acquire target, and then he shot. This guy, who is being blocked, says that he's going to acquire target with the least amount of damage, but he's boxed in. So we can move through enemies. Enemies can't move through us. Aha! So he's going to attack. And once again, he gets two successes. And Gao rolls the balloon, blue and two blacks. He blocks one, but he fires one through. Fires one off. <laughs> so number two is going to take a damage. Remember, one, two. And, um, then he is, and then he's going to do his second ability, which is both of them are going to gain the focus state. So focused, remember, um, they get to add a yellow die to their next attack roll. 
I have to kill them before that happens. But Kim Gao is going to, he blocked one, he's going to take one, so he gets another damage. So he's at six. Pull all these off, we give him a six. He's got six damage. Nine? No, six. Six damage. He's got six damage on him. Okay. Cool. So they both get the focus state, so I'll put that on their card. But they have that. And that ends their activation. Next up is going to be, we've got Uma and we got Jad. Uma is going to, ooh, he's in range. Uma's going to move her six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, buddy. And then Uma's going to blast him in the face with an orange, a blue, a yellow, and another yellow. And he defends with a yellow and a black. Okay. So, Uma is going to go all in on this guy. He gets one, two, three, just three. He gets three damage on him. He gets to roll a yellow and a black to defend. He blocks one, so he takes two damage. So, number one takes two. There we go. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That was her activation. That ends. Next up, um, no enemy AI to go, so it is um, Jazz's turn. I don't think there's anything she could do. Um, I'm not touching that console. <laughs> I'm not touching that con well, no, I'm not touching the console. I'm not touching the console. Because I could roll something that could be bad. So nope, not touching it. Not going to do it. So that ends the round. That ends the round. She's just gonna cool her jets. Um so next up we're gonna go round six. Before we check anything, we add one to the pool for the alert. There are items, there are people here, so we don't have to add one. So that guy's here. Uh, the AI cards go back. We look around. There's two. It costs three to, um, for the Cadmus, it would cost three to summon them back out. If it was just one there, I could spend one to summon the other guy back out. So to make him a full unit again. So cool. So we're good. Good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. Flip this back over. Good. We shuffle the AI deck, and we know the Nox is going to go on their turn, so that's all that's there. Oh, no, we're not done. We're not done. Sorry, I said we'd do this thing together. So, actually, people are coming back out. Darn it. <laughs> so, this is what happens. At the end of the round, um, I almost missed it. Okay. What do we do? We do this in order. First thing we do is we shuffle the AI cards. I was on the right phase. We shuffle AI cards. So end of phase, we shuffle the AI cards back. This hasn't even happened yet. We shuffle the AI cards back. Players straighten their rotators to say who they are. We check the alert. Hayden has, can only take four. One, two, three, four. He can only take four. He has two extra. What ends up happening is you take these two extra and any overage turns into reinforcement token. So these two go away. And then you take two reinforcement tokens and add them to the pool. Then we look and see, can we respawn anybody? Nobody needs to be respawned. There's no respawn ability on here. Then we get to the top of the round, add an aggro token. Cadmus is coming back out. One, two, three. Three. Grab the Cadmus card. They're coming on back. Cadmus gets spawned. I am dropping stuff so clumsy like. Where are Cadmus getting spawned? Uh, in the worst place possible. Cadmus gets spawned here and here. 
So Cadmus is back out on the board. Hayden, let's take, take two of them. He'll fight. You guys clear the stalker. He'll, he'll take care of them. So, um, cool. Cool. Everything's set up. Move the round tracker. The alert. Already added one back in for the alert. We're good. We're good. Cool. So that's what happened. Uh, five, five, eight, four. Okay. Top of the round. Um. Oh, I need to shuffle these. Uh, I need the Cadmus and the leaders. Shuffle these up. Shuffle those. Shuffle up the AI cards. Give AI. My turn. Who's going to go first? Hayden could go first. He can go over there and attack those Cadmus guys. Or we could take out these Nox leaders because they've got focused. I think that's probably the smart pull. So, Uma, Uma is going to go first, and Uma is going to attack that guy. She will get yellow, I mean, orange, blue, yellow, yellow, and she's going to attack number one. Number one. So she's got one success for blank, one success, one success, and then two, two. so she has one, two, three, four successes. He has four successes and a shield. You're gonna roll this. You just get one block, so she gets three, three successes on you, number one, which is enough because you only have four health and you and you had two damage on you already. So boop, you're dead. And she will get an aggro token. That's for her first movement. Her second is that she's gonna shoot at this Cadmus guy. <laughs> um, they have five health. She has to be range. What's your range? Five? One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, one away. Blast it. She's gotta move to help. Uh, one, two, right here. And that's all she can do. Darn, her range is five. <laughs> they, they have stupid range, but she doesn't. So that's her second action, that ends her turn. Enemy goes, it is the Cadmus. The Cadmus is gonna go. The Cadmus is gonna go, and um, they are going to acquire a target of person with the least damage. Oh, yeah. They really don't need to do. Ugh. The jazz is blocked. Well, jazz is blocked by Billy. Oh, they can see target. Let me see how they read this. Oh, if you can see a target, you don't have to do the first one. If there are no targets, you have to do it. Cool. So jazz is okay. But they're going to attack twice the person with the lowest aggro, which is Uma. <laughs> so they're going to attack Uma. Actually, no. Darn it. Billy has no aggro. They're going to attack Billy. Fantastic. Cool. What are you going to roll? Uh, get an exclamation point. They're going to actually try to hack Billy. Ooh. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. They're going to shoot at him. They're going to shoot at him. They're going to shoot at him. So they're going to do a yellow and an orange. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, they've done three damage to Billy, who has four health. That's the first attack. Billy gets to roll a black die. So that's three damage on Billy. And then they and then the same one attacks again. Which is two damage on Billy. One block, but one gets through Billy's 
<laughs> Billy goes down. Oh my gosh. Then the second Cadmus, who can see here, uh, is going to be the person with the lowest aggro is going to be Uma. So he's going to attack Uma. Which is two successes. Uma rolls. Uma rolls a blue and black. Why, Billy? Why could you roll that? So she blocks both of them, and then they're gonna attack again, which is two successes. Ooh, she takes two damage. Um, she has three, four, five, six. She's at six of eight. And that ends the Cadmus turn. Collateral damage. <laughs> That's a goal. Okay, so um, next up. The leaders haven't gone yet, so Kian Gao is going to go next to put a bolt in this guy's face with both his actions. So the first one, he's going to um, go two blues, an auto success. And an orange. So he's shooting that cat, that leader guy, right in the face. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Uh, this guy rolls. Do I get anything? Oh, plus, I can stun him. Two successes and a stun. Ooh. What do you got? So he blocks the two, but he still gets stunned. And a stunned character or enemy uh, must cancel a success on their next roll before activating switches. So he is stunned. And then my next action, I'm going to do it again. Sucker. So. Three successes. Four, actually. Four successes. He blocks two. Uh, if cancel, if canceling a is impossible, the state persists when it is canceled. It goes. So he blocks two. He takes two. So he's up to three of four. Darn it! I thought I could get him. And I'll get an aggro. With that, Uma would have gotten an, an aggro for shooting and killing, shooting the Cadmus. And she would have gotten the aggro for killing the other guys. She would have gotten. There we go. Okay. Um, that is the end of Kian Gao's turn. We know that the leader is next. And he is a I Claude. There's not two Nox units. If only one enemy of this unit remains on the table, add one reinforcement token to the reinforcement reserve. Ooh, they're gonna shut they're gonna summon somebody else. So at the beginning of the unit's activation that happens. It's then going to just attack and then focus, basically. Attack and focus. So it attacks with two yellows and a success. The King Gal. Uh, you just get two successes. I roll a blue, two blacks. Killing me, Kangao. Killing me. So you take two. He has four health left. And then it's going to then focus itself. Oh, it, it got to roll an extra die for its focus, which it missed. So uh, it then refocuses itself to get that back again, to get the focus state again. Okay. I forgot about the focus. Okay. Oh, wait, but it was stunned. So he only takes actually one damage. The stun state comes off. I did get to stun him. Oh. Whew. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay. We still got stuff to do. We still got stuff to do. So, Caden's turn. He is going to. As Uma went, Jazz still to go. Caden's going to move. One, two, three, four here. And then he's going all in on this nerd. Um, he's going to roll that. 
They're gonna get summoned. They're gonna the hackers are gonna come back anyway, so. See how they keep coming? So it's like you gotta you gotta move it. Uh So he got one, two, three. He's gonna take one to make it five. See if we can kill that guy straight out. Uh, so he's gonna take an aggro because they're gonna summon back in anyway. So might as well do it. To get two, so he does five. You missed a Cadmus. Just roll this. You block one. So you're gonna take two, three, four. That is enough of your health. You are dead. I will get another aggro for attacking that dude. Uh, I was supposed to get an aggro for him as well for attacking the dude. Okay. Uh, all right. Cool. So your turn's over. Jazz's turn, and you know what? Jazz is a hacker, and if we look at location, she hacks from uh, zero to six spaces, and she can go through walls. He's in my line of view, so he's gonna take a hack to the face. So I'm going to hack him for, for killing my robot. So Skullbuster gives me that. I get it. So I'm going to hack him. That's what, that's what Willis was talking about. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to hit him. I would hit him for one, which would kill him, and I'm going to cancel out any shield that he does. Darn it, he rolled two! <laughs> I cancel out a shield, so um, he, he got a shield, which blocked the one that I came at him with. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm going to do it again. So once again, I could cancel out a shield. Oh, there it is. There it is. So I, I fire shot, I cancel a shield, it cancels the shields, it hits him. He takes one damage, he dies. He doesn't get the fire back because he's dead. <laughs> so he doesn't get the fire back and he dies. Okay, so she will take an aggro token. And the Cadmus comes off the board. It was in. And cards play out. Okay. So the Cadmus is off the board. It's dead. That ends her turn. End the round. We check. We, we check to make sure all the AI is done. We check this countdown. So he, he can take eight. He has two, four, six. She can take five, she has two, four, five. She can have five, he can have four. He has way more, so he's gonna make, turn these two into reinforcement. Come on, come on. Then, beginning of the next round, seven. One gets added. Come on, you do it. Then we burn three. <laughs> To add the no the Nox hacker back, uh, two units of the Nox hackers get spawned here. Aiden is keeping these people at bay. Will you hurry up, please? Kill this guy so we can open the door. Uh, so they get respawned. Then this open. Kim Gao has to go first. So here we go. Kim Gao goes first. Please kill this guy. Blue, blue, star, and orange. I just, oh, I gotta reveal the AI cards. Oh gosh, come on, I can do it. I can do this. Okay, so, shuffle up the AI. Shuffle up this, which would be the Nox leaders and the hackers. Okay. 
Okay. Then, like I said, he's gonna blue, blue, and orange. Got to be kidding me, dude. So uh, he does two damage. This guy can probably block in his sleep. He blocks one. He takes one. Is that the first? That can't be the first time I hit him. No, it's not. Why did that get cleared? That's not the first time I've hit you. I'm going to say he had a damage. That wasn't the first time I hit him. I did something funky there. So I messed that up, but I'll just say he took he had damage on. And then I'll shoot him again. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to spend the two shields to add. So this is one, two, three, four damage. Four damage coming to you. You try to hit me back for one, but I block it with this one. And that's enough to kill you. You're dead. We did it. <laughs> okay, so you get one. This goes at the bottom. Stupid Peter. The AI card is there. Um, you get an, an aggro token comes in if, if, if. I want to make sure I say this right because there's, there's things that cause aggro. And the rule book has it all over the place. Um, if their activation, if they inflict a damage when they perform an interact, cool. So, yep. Reinforcement gets added if they didn't get to do it at the end. That's what happens. Okay, that ends that. His turn. He got two and he killed that guy. And he rescued Agnes. Agnes! You go, cool, lady! So then the first person up is the leaders, but they are dead. Mmm! Next one up, Jazz! Open that door! <laughs> Stop! Open that door! So what does she have to do in her sequencing? She has to get, of course, console two. She has to get a success. And that, which I'll, I'll move this over there in a second so you can see. She needs one shield, do the magnetic clamp. And if she gets a double success, she gets some software. So, cool. Ah! Okay, let's move this over here. So here, she needs this to unlock the magnetic clamp. This to open the door. And this to get some software. She is going to be rolling. She's hacking. So, boom. Lock pick. Boom. Hacking, boom. That's what she's rolling. And I can re-roll if I roll any blanks. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Alright. Okay. Got, I've got one and two down. So I've got these two. Pop this lock. And then that shield pops this. Lock. So let's see what happens. So, um, number one, security door two opens. Read security door two. So, poof. Security door two opens. Read security door two. Um, alert level moves forward one. Uh, deploy Gualo in a space. They cannot be activated until the next round, so do not assign them an AI card or add their initiative to the deck yet. I'm going to show you what that is in a second. That thing is off. This part feels like <laughs> lockpicking and too many bones. Okay. Let's go to the thing. The thing that do thing. The thing a thing a thing. You can see it proper here. So alert level moves forward one. Deploy Gualo there. Okay. Uh, all right. When we interact with her, this is going to happen. 
And we also unlock the other magnetic clamp. So we unlocked, we unlocked the other magnetic clamp, which was here. And so this says, uh, if, uh, Agnes, thinking ahead of possibility of you escaping the stalker was not. Yep, so that didn't happen. So it says, um, if the alert level is below four, move the alert indicator to four. That's when I get to her. When interacting with Agnes, if both, when interacting with Agnes, when, if both magnetic clamps were released, the stalker will take off. So I need to get the heck out now. Now we get out. I need to get to her and get out. Um, cool. So that is her first action. Her second action is she's going to move to to get to this lady. And so it says, um, the Toha immediately recognizes you as members of the Defiance team and hurries out of her makeshift cell. We need to get out of here, she says. Your calm log lights up with Corvo Goldstein's face. We've detected Ch um, Chasvati, Agent uh, Sheeskin, headed towards the cargo bay. I recommend that I recommend that you do not engage her until under any circumstance, unless you fancy a a new L host and a life of indentured servitude. Okay, time to go. Time to go. So that ends her turn. Um, Guilo comes out. Guilo is this card. This card here. It is a very strong creature that rolls tons of dice. It has an HMG for range three to 10. It has a breaker pistol. It has a nano screen. It hacks like crazy with green dice. It's just, it's, it's an elite boss. And so it comes out, but it gets no AI card. This focus card's going in a second. Um, okay, cool. Time to run. So we got Uma who's next. I'm gonna shoot and then run. <laughs> So, um, but he doesn't activate this round yet. Um, the hackers actually get to go next, which is their next card. So the hackers are going to go after now that uh, Jazz is done and interacted and interacted with this creature. So we've got Vara, and um, Vara's card. Actually, I probably should show it up here. She actually has abilities. She can move six. I have to use an active or go one of my person's actions to make the to use her. She has six health, um, four aggro. She rolls one black die. She has six movement, and she has a pistol that she can shoot people with. Her job is to book it onto the stalker. That's her job. But she is part of my crew now as an ally. And Agnes is part of my crew because I got her out also, and she has the exact same movement, but she rolls a yellow die. So Agnes is good. I'll put her over here with Kanga because they're buddies now. Okay, time to get the heck out of here. Uh, the hackers go next because they're next up. So their AI is going to be, uh, they're gonna attack the person with the highest aggro. Uma. <laughs> Ooh, Uma. Uma's gonna get shot for... She's gonna get shot for one success. And two yellows. So just one success, she's gonna roll the blue and black. She blocks that one, fires one back, hits that guy for one. I'll say number one shot her. And then um, he is going to, so he does one shot, and then he's going to target the person, target the, what's he gonna do? What's that, what's this guy? Target the person that's closest. Okay. The next guy's gonna attack. One, uh, yep, because he's not hacking. And she blocks that one. Uma lives. Okay, Uma's turn. 
let's see if we can shoot somebody in the face. Uh, so let's let's shoot number one who shot at us. I'm just gonna shoot him and then I'm getting on the stalker. <laughs> so uh, she's gonna roll an orange, a blue, a yellow, and a yellow. And that's Ooh, that was useless. Can she do anything with those? Nope. <laughs> so it's gonna use, let's see if it shoots at her. Uh, yellow and a black. It shoots one, she blocks it. And then she's like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way in the corner. And that will be her turn. Uh, anybody else left to go? We've already done these, so I'm not gonna be hacking that. Uh, anybody else left to go? Caden did go already. He killed that guy. Extreme prejudice. Or no, he didn't go yet. Because he won, then she did it, so Caden's turn. So Caden's turn, he's going to... One, two, three, four... Five, six... Eh, maybe not. One, two, three, four... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Ken's going to go one, and he's going to loot that crate. That's what he's going to do. He's going to loot the... Oh, you're not seeing what I'm doing. Sorry. Ken's here. He killed that guy. And then he's going to move one, and he's going to loot that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. Um... <laughs> Dumbest thing ever. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. What's Kylo's movement? Six? Okay. Yep. 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 No. Can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. I can't be greedy. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, he'll go there. Why am I not getting on the stalker? Because Jazz is so far away, that's why. Jazz is too far away. And I need Jazz and her. It's basically going to be, they both move six. The so Jazz will be one, two, three, four, five, six. And she'll be right behind her. That's one round. One, two, three, four, five, six. And she'll be right behind her. That's round two. Hayden's got to stay. He's got to stay. I'm going to attack that guy. There's going to be two rounds for me to get out of here. Two rounds, and I'm out. Two. Uh, this guy spawns. Oh, the Guilo spawns. Um, where you want to see where he is. And the Guilo has his own actions that are going to come in. Uh, I need to pull his token. I'm going to pull his token. Uh, so this awesome, hard mech unit that wants to kill my life. Where are you? Where are you, Grillo? Caliban. There you are. So you spawn... You spawn right here. Here we go, 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 here we go. Oh uh, boy. He's gonna attack. He's gonna attack with his rippers, uh, orange yellow, and he gets a blow. Okay, this guy defends with yellow and black. So, um, what do you get? What do you get? One, two. So two damage going out. He blocks them both. And then he fires one back and I block it. And that's it. That's it. That's his turn. Oh boy. Okay. That's the end of the round. 
Um, she increases, uh, it says, where's her stuff? When I talk to her, if the alert level's below four, move it to four. Oh boy. Add one to the pool. Oh boy. Which I did. And then deploy Nisha She skin. So we've got two elites. We've got two elites coming. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna die. All right, so, so spy, so hackers are still there. The leaders are dead. AI card was not used on the leader, so another aggro comes out. Uh, so we got niche the hackers and the Quilo. Then we look here, we spend three. Oh, the spec ops come out. And the spec ops spawn in this zone. Okay. All right, so we've got Nish Knox, spec ops, and the Glilo. Oh, gosh. So we've got the Spec Ops who came out because I had three here. I had four there, so the Spec Ops came out. The Guilo's here. The Hacker's here. And Nishi Skin is out. And she is... If you thought the Guilo was bad, she is deadly. She just kills. There's nothing I could do about it. Okay. We need to go. Go, go, go. All right. So shuffle those up. Shuffle the AI card. We move to the next round, which is eight. We can do it. We can make it. We can make it. We just have to get to the loading dock. That's all we got to get to. If we get here, we made it on the ship. We're good. Eight locks and we're out. Two rounds. We just need to survive two rounds. <laughs> uh, let me verify that I don't have to sacrifice an action for that. All right. Uh, allies. Allies is all I care about. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm so scared right now. I'm so close to winning. Um, allies. If I get her on the ship, Trulli could take off. Okay, but I'd be losing someone. Um, let's see if they change that because in the playthrough I watched, they um. They said you have to give up a turn, but let's see if they change that in the rules. Enemies, enemies, allies. Okay, some missions allow you to interact with a neutral character to turn them into your ally and add them to the defense, Defiance's crew. The remotes that accompany some characters are also allies. For all intents and purposes, an ally is a character. They have their own activation in each round. Cool. Being able to perform two actions from one of the... Okay, they changed it. Thank you. Thank you. Allies are represented by the ally card. They changed it. We're out of here. <laughs> they changed it. Okay, they changed it. So in the, in the demo playthrough, you have to give up an action to do it. But they've changed it, and they've said that um, your ally basically is, gets their own turn. So they get, they're basically a character. They get their own turn in the turn order. All right, <laughs> pull the feet out of jaws of victory. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. All right, AI cards. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. All right. First up is going to be. Um, first up is going to be. Uh, pop, 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 pop. So, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hit that. And let them all aggro him. And he'll be okay. They auto med kill him. Um can Gaka step out and shoot. So that, that that can help. Yep, let's do that. So first activation is gonna be Vara. She's getting the heck out of dodge. 
So one, two, three, four, five. She moves to six. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that will end her turn. First up, the Guilo. Uh, which is this guy. So he's going to target. Oh, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> he's going to target. Um, he's going to tar he's going to seek to target the closest character, which is him. So he's going to uh, target him. So he's going to move his full movement of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then he's going to attack the target with a least damage on a range of ten. Ten. Can't get to her. Cool. So he's going to shoot Caden. Not cool, but cool. He's going to roll two yellow, a <laughs> <the> blue, <laughs> two yellow and the blue. I mean, two orange and a blue. Sorry, two orange and a blue. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. So it's two successes. Come on, Caden. Come on. He fires back, but it blocks it. He takes two damage. Uh, Caden has 10 health. He's up to 8. No, he's up to... He's not up to 8. He's 3, 4, 5. He's up to 5. He's got 10 health. He's halfway down. That ends your turn, good sir. That ends your turn. It is Jazz's turn now. She's gonna go. Um, one. Basically, she was one away, so she'll be in the doorway. So she'd be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, next activation is the Spec Ops. Spec Ops. Oh, he would have rolled black too. That would have been blank. The Spec Ops is going to target the highest aggro person in range, which is Caden. So Spec Ops is going to attack Caden. Yep, that's what they're going to do. They're going to attack and focus, actually. Uh, here we go. Nope, they're not going to focus. They're just going to attack. So they're going to attack. They're going to get a success. They're going to roll. Spec Ops is going to roll yellow and orange. Um, one success, two successes. He blocks one, gives one back, they block it, so he takes one damage. Black Hayden stayed, so he's got six on him. The next one's gonna attack. Two. He blocked both of them. So he's, and then they're gonna focus. Gonna gain focus. That's their thing. That ends that. Ah! Oh, <laughs> I just need to live one more round. One more round, and then we won. Once everyone's on the ship, it's over. It doesn't matter if. It doesn't matter. The ship's already prepped to fly. Okay, so. Um, I just need to make one more round. So my turn. It's going to be. Ken Gao's turn, he's gonna move here, and then he's gonna fire. He can only hit this guy, so he's gonna just shoot that guy. Wow, wow, uh, <laughs> wow. Two blues, two blues, a star, and an orange. Get some of the heat off of him. So he's got three successes, and he's got a couple shields. Two shields, he can use that to add another success, so it's four successes and one shield. This guy's going to roll, that guy is the Nox hacker who was still there. He's going to roll a black. Doesn't block anything, takes four to the face. That's your health, you die. I gain an aggro token. Uh, that puts me at eight. One, two, three, two, four, six, eight. Yep, so I'm at my max. Okay, that ends his turn. Next person, I'm so nervous, it's the hacker. The hacker AI is going to... 
the hacker AI is going to um, he's going to attack the closest person to him. Okay, so both the hackers are going to attack with one success and two yellows. One success, two yellows. Uh, that's that. So it's just one success. Uh, he'll do a blue and a black. Blocked it. Next one. One success. The hackers. Yep, that's all again. Blocked it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna throw it. Okay, so uh, he blocked both. He's good. Um, next one. One success. He blocked it and shot one back, which he blocked. And then the other one. One success. He blocked it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, whose turn is it? So Kengao went, Jazz went, the character went. Hayden hasn't gone yet. They're done. Hayden is going to move on to the stalker. One, two, three. That's going to end this turn. Next up is Nisha Sheeskin. Um, she has her own activation cards, so she does not need to um, use her AI card. So she is going to target the person with the most aggro. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, her range is. Can you read that? That looks like a 13. It's 8. Range is 8. So, 8. Nope, can't get there. So she can't do it. And then she's going to do it again. Move there. And attack the person with the most aggro, which is Kangao. So she's going to shoot Kangao. Actually, no, she won't. We do one, two, three. Four. There we go. Then she's going to shoot King. <laughs> okay, so she gets the roll. Good grief. She rolls two yellows and a red. Reds hurt. So that's what she rolls on him. No successes. It's just. And she gets a crit. She can crit on me. Like she just did. She did. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. She just did seven damage to Ken Gao, who rolls a blue and two blacks <laughs> to try to not die. Uh, block one, fire back, so he at least hits her for one before taking six damage to the face and going down. So she'll take one damage. He goes down. So you remove, when you go down, you remove all damage, remove all aggro. And they are in the unconscious phase. Woo! <laughs> okay. He goes down like Liston, but he's on the stalker. Okay. Um, that ends her turn. Uh, Uma. One, two, three, four. Kengao is down so I can shoot over. And I'm gonna shoot that lady who shot my friend. I saw what you did to my friend. So Uma is going to shoot for an orange, a blue, a yellow, and a yellow. <laughs> I just got in the watch as he'd been having fun with this game. So yes. Yes, Henry. Yes, I have. And I'm terrified right now because I'm about to win or lose, possibly. So Uma's going to shoot. Um, Uma gets, that goes here. So that's a blank. Bunch of stuff. So she's got one success, two successes on this creature who's going to roll a blue and a green to defend. So the green die has to block everything. Blocked both my shots, fired back. I at least blocked one, thank the maker. So it just blocked the shots that she shot to try to help her friend. And that ends that. Who was done?
Everyone's gone. Everyone's gone. Final round. Here we go. Um, all the ads are gone. Nobody's dead. Uh, we check coverage. They haven't gone over. No one's gone over. But at the beginning of the round, one comes here. Nobody's getting summoned. Is there any reinforcements? No reinforcements coming. And here. It's here. We've got um, Emma, the Knox. It's back up. Where's the Guilo? And the Guilo. Shuffle is up. I just need to get one. I, I, my, I won. I won. I won. I made it on the ship. I won. She's in the doorway. So she's like in the doorway shooting out. I, I won. I just beat it. Oh, I lived. Okay. <laughs> okay. I made it. Here we go. Let me walk it through. Let's walk it through. Not enough to summon anybody new. Um, we shuffle up the AI cards. One, two, three, four. Flip over all the tokens. Okay. Ready for me to win? Uh, Vera's going first, and that's how I won. So Vera goes first. Uh, one, two, three, four on the ship. We won. <laughs> as soon as everybody's on the ship, we're gone, and we won. Oh, you didn't see that. Let me reel it back. Let me reel it back, put it back in effect. Vera was here, and let me make sure I can focus properly. Vera was here, so she's going to move one, two, three, four on the ship. But let's say, you know, we won. We won. But let's say, okay, well, what's going on? Well, who's going first? The Guilo goes, who will then do a acquire closest target. One, two, three. And then attack that closest target, rolling orange, orange, and a blue. And formation point. And he does two damage. Uma's going, I mean, uh, Jazz is going to try to block that with two blacks. And anything, anything, anything. Nope, just two blacks. She blocks one, takes another, so she takes one damage, because you want, you want to be like, let's play it fair. Okay, cool. That ends that creature's turn. Jasmine, boom, done, we won. So the ship takes off. Our, we rescued our co-pilot, the ship takes off and flies. So let's read the conclusion. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> End of mission. The mission ends if, at the beginning of the round, the characters uh, are... Oh, if all the characters are unconscious, um, in this case, we lose, and that's downfall. Or the stalker takes off. The stalker took off as soon as everybody was on board. Uh, when the mission ends, each character receives um, one experience point if Vara is on board the stalker, even if unconscious. Yep. If uh, one experience point if Agnes has been removed from the uh, has not been removed from the game, which she hasn't. One experience point if every character aboard the stalker, not counting remotes, yep, made it. Um, characters, including allies who are not aboard the stalker when the mission ends, receives a consequence face down. Connector spaces do not count as part of the stalker. Go to page 65 and read No One Left Behind. Everybody's on the stalker. If Vara Zandar is not aboard the stalker when the mission ends, go to page 65 and say she's captured. Nope. She's good. So happy, happy, happy path. And that's the mission. <laughs> so we got three experience. Um, he's going to... Kian Gao is going to receive a consequence because he went unconscious. So he's going to receive a consequence from being... Uh, from being healed up when we get back to the ship. Uh, the stalker takes off. The stalker maneuvers quickly, steering away from the facilities. Through the pain from your wounds and your adrenaline accelerated pulse, you breathe a sigh of relief. The enemy was really close to taking you all down, that is for sure. Little by little, you notice the tension on your shoulders ebbing away until a familiar face appears on your visor once again. Cuervo, like his namesake, is never one to bring good news. The end of mission one, the extraction. Mission accomplished. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, Billy got busted, um, but we we we're okay. We made it back. Okay. So when we get back to the ship, I'm gonna save this for I'm gonna save that segment because you've been through a lot with me for round two. <laughs> but when we get back to the ship, we assign people from where they go to deal with stuff and help. And basically what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna assign um I want to reread the to make sure that I could take these this damage off and we don't deal with it, um, just to make sure we're not going on the next mission with six pain. But we get we take the stalker, we leave, we get back to the defiance, and we hot foot it out of the facility. Um, I will deal with all this stuff in the next playthrough. <laughs> so the next playthrough we're gonna we're gonna start off with what happens on the defiance, the ship phase, what happens on the defiance, and then we're gonna go on the next mission. I wanted to leave that off. Let me see what do we got. I just got it. Were any cards or models missing from your pledge? No. I got all. I got all the cards, uh, Henry. I got all the models. I just the the models come completely disassembled, and I have to put them together. All my glues, all my paint, all my stuff is in storage until I move in February. So I played with my new meeple people. This is what they look like. At some meeple people. So that's who I played with this round. Um, so nope, that didn't happen. Uh, mission account, yeah. So do you have any questions about this game so far? Ask me in the chat um, or in the comments. Ask me in the chat right now if you, if you have any questions. And I will go and deal with all of what happened. <laughs> we get back to the ship. Because, because uh, Quang Gao was knocked unconscious, he's going to receive a consequence. And that consequence can get healed off if he goes and takes a, takes a breather, right? I just have to reread the rules, and I don't want to keep you guys too long on, because we're going to go through some backstory stuff. I don't want to keep you guys too long on saying, okay, let me look through the book and see about, you know, healing health and all that other stuff. Which, if you're up for, I'm okay with. But I just want to make sure that, that you're, you're, you're good. Good. You're good. Uh... Between missions, which is what which is what happens. So between missions is what happens. That's this piece here. So I get to do stuff, spend you know, do sick bay stuff, write code, um, do all these things on the stalker. Basically, all of this here happens between missions, and I got to make sure I do it right. All this here, all this, all that. We're gonna be upgrading for darn sure, but before the next mission. But that's what we got. Can you explain how the AI and enemies are set up in the beginning of the game? Sure, sure, sure. So, I said this before, I live next to a hospital, so a lot of ambulances go by. Um, so, AI. Now, what we do in the beginning of the game, and this is just for the start of the game, there are two spec ops that are here, which we dealt with. So, you put the spec ops in the... Um, Henry, you put the spec ops in the um, in the deployed slot. There are three slots for enemies. There is the um, current for the mission. There is the uh, available, and there is the deployed. The spec ops goes in deployed, which means they're out. They're ready to attack. The um, available, which is I believe for this mission was the hacker. I believe yeah, it was the hackers go into the um, available slot. So the hackers go into the available slot. What does that mean? So there is deployed, available, and then everybody else who's going to be in the story, right? So it starts off kind of like this. And let's clear up some of this to clear some space so you can follow. Uh, move this. And we took off with that, so we'll move that over here. All right. So this will be everyone who is going to be in this mission in the... Um, in the slot here, right? They're ready to play whenever the story tells us to play them. We've got the available slot where the hacker goes and the deployed slot where the spec op goes, okay? I don't remember this word precisely, so whoever's watching it later, you can quote me on that. But this is everyone who's in the gonna be in, the, in this scenario. The available slot, the deployed slot. Deployed means they're on the board. Available means they're not um, ready to be, they're, they're ready to be called on the board. When we attack, we get aggro tokens, right? Which is these things. If, we, if our aggro tokens exceed the, um, 
if our aggro tokens exceed the uh the amount that we're supposed to have like Caden can only have four so if he gets five they get turned into reinforcement tokens right there are alerts that come up on there uh, uh like basically as the alert goes up there are things that says at the beginning add an alert if an enemy was attacked and killed if an entire unit was killed before they, they air, their AI card activates, add one. So let's say we've added three. What we can do is on this card, let me hold it up so you can see. On this card right here on the side, this is how much it costs for it to make it from available to deployed. So if we have three, we, three of these tokens, not the aggro tokens, but the reinforcement tokens, at the beginning of the round only, 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 unless specified by the book, you spend those three and you deploy these. And you deploy them to a space that it says is that, that is said for respawn spaces in the book. There will, there will be specific spaces where they spawn. So then this goes from available to deployed, and now you have two. Now, what you do is at the beginning of the round, you shuffle up the AI cards. Always, always shuffle up the AI cards. Always put two ai cards on there then you take their their initiative cards which is the hacker and the spec ops you shuffle those up and there will be more than two but let's just say for our example's sake there are two you shuffle them up and you put them down then we start the new round we go first as the heroes one person goes first not all one so one person goes, and after that one person goes, we grab the top card of the initiative card and flip it over. It is the Spec Ops. So the Spec Ops will then flip their AI card, and it will do what it says on the AI card in order. It will say, okay, acquire a target for somebody with the least aggro, or with the most aggro, sorry. If people, if they can already see people, you don't do that. You skip to the second one, and it says attack the person with the most aggro. And then you do a second action, attack the person with the most aggro. Everyone in your unit attack goes on your turn. In the spec ops, there are two people that deploy, not one, two. And that is the entire unit. So both of them are going to go on that turn. And both of them are going to roll an orange, a yellow, and get an auto success. Does that make sense? Does that make sense on how it works? I'm gonna drink some water by the answer. <laughs> oh my god. So that's how it sets up at the beginning of the game. So basically, available, uh, sorry, Spec Ops is uh, uh, deployed, available, and that's it. And that's how it works. Hopefully, that helped. Any other questions? I'm here to answer before we get into reading and exploring the world and giving you all the information. Like I said, I will, de I will let you all know how the Defiance phase works. Make sure Qu Kian Gao gets his uh, consequence for going down. Um, make sure we level up all that other good stuff. We'll do that in the next playthrough. Uh, so what's the last pile of enemies for? The last pile of enemies, these are the enemies that are going to be available for this scenario. The, the book, the, the campaign book, is going to tell you when to put these in the available slot or the deployed slot. So, for instance, we opened up this door. When we opened up that door, the campaign said, take the Guilo and put it in the uh, deployed slot. So it came out. And when we talked to her, it said, um, she skin, put her in the deployed slot. <laughs> So they, they didn't go to available, they immediately got deployed to the board. So now we have three deployed, right? One available, and two that, were, that hasn't been summoned yet. But by that time, we had had the Cadmus and we had these. So let's say no more were in this slot. Three were deployed, three were in the um, available slot. And what ends up happening is every single time you kill a unit, so let's say I kill the Spec Ops. I would take that, the entire unit, both of them, I would take this and put it at the bottom of the available slot, and then when the turn round comes around, I will look and see how much I have to spend and pull from the top. And then I pull from the top, and then I pull from the top, per how much ever um, 
reinforcement points I could spend to redeploy. So that's what the last pile's for. It's basically saying these are all the creatures that will be used in this camp, in this mission. And the book will tell you when to deploy them. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, and we'll do between missions, we'll do all that stuff. So we, we completed the first mission. Sure, I messed something up somewhere because what happens? Uh, but we're going to get into some info. All right, so why are we doing all this? Why are we going around and shooting up everything and trying not to die? <laughs> well, let's talk about, uh, have you found it hard to keep track of the alert level during the game? No, no, no. Because the, alert, the effects of the alert level trigger as soon as the round starts. It's, it's never other than that. So it's like, move the round tracker, check the alert. So that's, that's the reason why they put it on the same board, because it's like, okay, I'm at round five, the alert's at two. Move the round, check the alert. What's the alert? What happens? And that's, that's how it works. So the alert check comes right then. I know in the book it says end phase. I honestly think you will have a hard time, hard, hard time following that if you keep the end phase. So I've moved stuff around for it to make sense. I said, because it says at the end phase, what you do is you check the count, build the reinforcement pool. Um, you then check if any AI add to the reinforcement pool, check the alert. What I do is I say, okay, everybody's gone, it's done. Then we check this add to the reinforcement pool. We check this AI add to the reinforcement pool. Advance the round, check the alert, add to the reinforcement pool, then deploy. Otherwise, it would, you'd be, be like, okay, do all this and this and this and this and this. When I'm already on this board to advance the round, that's when I could check the alert. And that's what makes sense to me. So people will probably like, you're supposed to check the alert five times after Tuesday. No, I, I, that's when I do it. Sorry. It's still thematic. It still works. It just still works. <laughs> so. All right, uh, let's see. Why are we doing all of this fun stuff? Okay, I'll still keep asking your questions. I'll still answer them as I'm reading through. So let's go up and up and up. Okay, why are we doing all this? The portal to Acheron. I would like all members of the council to welcome the basilisk level official of the spa section of Bureau Aegis, Yosef Goldstein. He will begin the session of the Permanent Evaluation Board for the State of War against the Combined Army. Goldstein walks solemnly towards the center of the Great Hall, where a lamp hung at an accusing angle which hampered the recognition of the, man, the men and women who comprised the board as they sat at a semicircular table carved out of some word redwood, a contimento, a contimento redwood. Officer Goldstein cleared his voice while evaluating the hill's acoustic. The hall's acoustic, sorry. He joined his hands behind his back, stuck his chest out, and pulled his chin to an upper angle. Respectable leaders and gentlemen of the board, defensive operation alert level, codename Infinity, is about to be surpassed. He paused so that everyone present could digest the information and meditate on its severity. He was a man of action, who despised beating around the bushes to sweeten reality. He took special delight in being straight with office senior staff and officers whom he barely respected. They weren't hardened by the real world. They were gosh darned bureaucrats. Right? <laughs> he didn't say gosh darn. According to the data obtained from prisoners and deciphering enemy communications, the military intelligence arm of the Bureau Aegis PSI unit and Alfie Intel, with less than 1% margin of error, it has come to our attention that the aliens are completing the construction of a jump portal on the other side of the wormhole Acheron. 
All analysis are in agreement that the combined army is about to unleash an unprecedented assault against the human sphere. He exhaled heavily. As you're well aware, thanks to the resources and efforts of all the nations represented this, on this board, the human sphere has so far managed to contain the combined army's onslaught at the cost of a massive amount of human lives. We must be clear. Traversing unstable wormholes from the galactic expansion front, where we estimate the combined army's leading civilization to be located, to the human sphere located within the interior of the galaxy, has an extremely high level of uncertainty with a success rate of less than 30%. That's what we're going against, okay? That's why we're still here. Otherwise, all our efforts would have been worthless. Golstein spoke the last words of his speech slowly, letting the gravity of them set in. Ladies and gentlemen, this leaves little doubt that if the alien civilization completes the construction of this portal on the other side of the wormhole, the human sphere will be annihilated. A low voice murmur erupted, and the hall filled with uncomfortable shifting and fierce hand gestures, really fierce, until the voice of an elderly woman spoke up, bringing complete silence to the rest of the board. What plan has the Bureau Aegis designated officer? We've organized and trained three independent teams in different secret operations 012 bases. Each team is compi compi composed of a ship, a crew, a team of engineers, and an assault command. The ship's name, Orpheus, Defiance, and Silencer are modified freighters equipped with Minotaur engines, which are necessary to make the jump through the wormhole. The crew and engineering teams are comprised of top-level personnel, hand-picked from the best soldiers, technicians, and scientists in the entire sphere. The assault commands have been clearly configured and selected from the profile presented by each nation in the human sphere. They are being pushed beyond their mental and physical limits so that they may accomplish the most ambitious sabotage mission ever conceived, the destruction of an alien portal. A deep and hoarse voice emerged from the large table. Why modified freighters instead of battle cruisers? I'm afraid the enemy's ability to infiltrate us has already surpassed the standard level of security of any army. Shocked voices filled the room. Cuervo Goldstein politely cleared his voice, silencing the noise, and carried on. If we are to be successful, we must keep a low profile even amongst ourselves. We can't gather an assault fleet if we want to surprise the enemy. The three ships will be sent to Paradiso with documentation designating them as a mercenary convoy hired by Pan Oceana. Once there, we will have the team we consider is best suited for the task jump through Acheron. Will the destruction of the portal put an end to the alien invasion, a voice asked? Not at all, Goldstein replied bluntly, but it will buy us time. How much time, officer? Goldstein moistened his lips, his jaws muscles bulging as he clenched his teeth repeatedly. Not enough, but anything's better than nothing. And that's why we're doing this, okay? They are building a portal to go through the Akron wormhole, which is a massive whirlhole. Once they solidify that portal, the invasion starts in the human sphere and they start wiping out civilization. Three ships, the Orpheus of the Defiance and the Silencer, was put together with tack teams on each. We read in the beginning that the Silencer and the Orpheus have gone radio silent. We don't know what happened to them. So the Defiance job is to complete the mission. Okay, what do we got? Does the number of enemy kills affect how strong your characters get? No. It seems like they all got the same experience and rewards at the end, regardless of uh, whatever enemies were slain. You do not get experience for killing enemies. You get aggro, <laughs> but you don't get experience. Um, this game has a skill tech tree, and that skill tech tree is you use that experience to build it up, and you can hold multiple skills in your tech tree, right? So um, you use those to make yourself stronger so that you can survive the harder missions to come. Um, that is the point of it. You don't get experience for killing enemies. You just get experience for winning the scenario now remember i got three xp for winning the scenario that gets that's going to get used on the ship to upgrade myself 
But if if I would have if my pilot would have died, I would have had to first roll dice to see if I can get out of there, which eh, but it, I wouldn't have gotten an experience, so I'd have been down to two. If Vara was captured, I wouldn't have gotten experience in that, and she gets the captured state and gets put into something completely different. So it it doesn't give you experience, but I think that's okay since the upgrades that you're going to get and the equipment that you're going to be able to buy to upgrade yourself is going to make you really strong. So I think that's okay. Um, okay, the portal to Acheron, that's that story. And we read about uh, Uma Sorensen, right? So she was selected for the mission, even though she was part of this ops thing that went crazy, um, where she lost her sister. But she joined the Defiance mission because of that. Okay, let's talk about King Gao. Captain King Gao, Invincible Officer. And then we'll talk about Caden, and we'll talk about Jazz, and then we will... There's two other characters, there's a couple of other characters we can gain. But the next mission is called Through Enemy Lines. Ooh. And this is crazy. Holy cow. This is cool. Uh, so the next mission, actually the board gets built out as the rounds go by. That's pretty cool. I, I'm not mad at that. All right. So, um, Yang Gao always wanted to be a good officer, but what is actually a good officer? The textbook definition would be one who accomplishes the mission. Nevertheless, military discipline and the reality of combat don't allow such simplistic definitions. In the trenches, the most valuable officer is the one who's uh, concerned both about the mission and the men and women under their command. In the offices of the high command, the most valuable ones are those who carry out uh, with the mission and the orders, while respecting the chain of command. Sometimes their visions are incompatible, and the time may come when an officer has to choose between them. That choice was, will determine the, the course and success of their military career. During the Japanese uprising, Kang Gao was the colonel in charge of the 5th Regiment of Zhuang Invincibles, the terracotta soldiers of the Orange Banner Army's Six Corps, deployed at Kuramori. Sorry if I said that wrong. During the assault on um, yeah, Tabigarushu, Tabigarushu Junction, and, in, and these things exist in this infinity world, which is really cool. An important communications node in the uh, Hirutusu Peninsula, uh, his regiment took control of an energy substation important to regional operations. Surrounded by Japanese troops from the Fuku Operations Group and isolated from the rest of his forces, Gan Gao devised a defensive strategy that would allow him to protect his position until reinforcements arrived. Nevertheless, the high command, in a need of victory to show to the media, ordered him to engage one of the Japanese forces' positions that intelligence thought held the Fuku Group's headquarters. Despite how attractive it was to be head the Japanese forces in the zone, this was an extremely risky move that would have weakened the 5th Regiment's defenses and endangered them. Besides, the colonel was fully aware those orders were based in unconfirmed intelligence, which could be wrong on, or even a trap. Nothing, not to mention that the numerical superiority of the Japanese forces assaulting the substation meant that any unit tasked with such attack wouldn't return alive, even if successful. It was then that Kian Gao had, had to decide what kind of officer he wanted to be. Should he sacrifice troops and risk a position, but carry on with the orders received or protect the men and women under his command and risk the position he was supposed to defend and defy a direct order? Should he be a trench officer or a career officer? At that point, Kian Gao was resolute. Against the venerable tradition of respect and adhesion to the chain of command, so characteristics of the state empire army, the colonel stayed true to his original strategy, keeping his forces within the defensive perimeter. Thus, he repelled several Japanese attacks and managed to defend the position until reinforcements arrived, confirming that the communication officers of the Fuku group weren't where they had been told. Nonetheless, it mattered little that the colonel's suspicions about the val validity of intelligence data was correct, or that he managed to hold a position that ensured the logistic stability of the Orange Banner Army 6 Corps in their advance towards uh, 
Kofuku. For the high command, Kanijao had ignored a direct order, and in the eyes of his superiors, he was no longer a trustworthy officer. Awesome. A court martial would demote this officer to the rank of captain, removing him from the Zhu Young Invincibles 5th Regiment. From that day on, Kangao has been assigned to a, a special purposes unit, going from one operation to another, each one more dangerous than the last. Operations all across the sphere in which he has had to put his command skills to good use, but also his command skills as the veteran invincible he is. Yet, it's undoubtable that this officer still has a long road ahead of him to clean the stain that his actions at Tabigarushu Junction has left on his record and his family's honor. But after all that's happened, after the discredit and shame of being demoted, Tiangao still can still look at himself in the mirror. He can do it because even though his career lies in ruins and his name was vilified, the image that the mirror returns is that of a trench officer. A good officer. And that is what he always wanted to be. Cool. So that was Ken Gao's backstory. Uh, do y'all want me to go through Uma and Jazz? I mean, Caden and Jazz? Or do you want me to save that for later? BGG waits this game 3.0. Do you agree? Are there many updates and, are there many updates and rule changes? Um, BGG, I would probably say I would go on um, Infinity Defiance's site and download the um, download their rulebook and download um, their Mission 1 extraction. Because they had to reprint those because the first Mission 1 that's in this rulebook that came with it is missing some stuff. So they had to, they, they, did, they immediately did a 1.0 reprint from the website for you to go look at. Um, the only thing that I never got an answer on, so I house ruled it because it said so in the rules, was that in the rule book on campaign, starting the campaign, two, 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 it says, number three, each player takes the specialty card of their chosen character, which is what I assigned to my team. But it never said what the specialty card of the chosen character was. What I had to do was I went on their site and I looked at the specialty cards and I looked in the book at how it laid out the mission board and it showed me what their cards were. And that's how I found out how it was. Um, their example of the mission board in the rule book on the, on the main setup tells you what the cards are. And you can't really see it. You cannot really see it for preparation if you look in the book. But when you download the rule book, you can zoom into the PDF and you can read what they are. And that's when you find out which specialty cards they're supposed to have. So I think there's going to be some updates coming to these just to smooth out. There wasn't a lot. I mean, for me, a lot of people like to use the word fiddliness. There's a lot of fiddliness in board games. I don't like to play it because it's too fiddly. This game doesn't have a lot to me. If you read the rules, there's, there's three questions I asked. One, does Jazz start off with all her hacks? Because it doesn't say explicitly in the book when you start off. But I noticed from asking um, on the Facebook page that it says, if their image is in the top right, that's their starting equipment. And those were on her hack ones, so that's how she got those hack, those hack programs. That wasn't clear. The specialty cards were clear, and I think that was it. I knew how to set up the AI. I just asked the question randomly on the Facebook page, but I knew how to set it up. I just wanted to verify to make sure I knew what I was talking about, um, so I was good. So two things out of an, everything that we just went through, I, if people call that fiddly, eh, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, attacks work, line of sight, pretty straightforward. Um, two actions to do whatever you're doing. I don't see anything fiddly. So I think there'll be rule updates to kind of probably help fix some of the unknowns, those two things for sure, which I hope Corvus Belly puts out to a, a FAQ that talks about that or an errata. Other than that, it seems pretty straightforward to me. This game is, is polished. It's just not going to be easy for everybody. 
Uh, where do you see 3.0? I see 9.2. If you look in the rule book and you look at um, on page, page, page 35, if you've got the rule book and you look on page 35 and beginning the campaign number three, it will tell you. Um, 3.0, 9.2. That's all I see. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about rule three of the specialty cards. Um, if you download the rule book, and let's let's do that. Let us do just that. Uh, I got to go back down the table to view it. Hold on. Okay. So rule book. Oh, okay. You're asking Brian. Uh, let's open up the rule book, shall we? Uh, uh, oh, here it's top play. If we go to the rule book, and hate how long this thing takes to load. And once again, the fiddliness that people will say that is fiddly is like the rule about the um the enemy rolling like the success on a block nullifying everything you have that is something you need to pay attention to it's not something that's like oh it's spelled out i mean it's spelled out in this rule book pretty straightforward but it, it's just you need to know to look for that if you don't know to look for that you're gonna miss it uh, so i i don't like when people say games are fiddly because they're not some games are ether feels is fiddly even though I love it, it's fiddly. But some games just aren't. Yeah, number three. Right here. Right. Each character is given a specialty card of their turn. But it doesn't really say, and it says check the specialty table below. You'll, you'll, you know, it'll tell you what that is, right? And you go down the specialty table below. Below, right? <laughs> acquiring specialties it tells you how to acquire them it doesn't tell you what they are and then it says here this is the breakdown of the specialty card in the example so we finish mission one so the max specialty level that we can buy is a level one but it doesn't say what they start with so what the hey man you know uh that that kind of threw me Yeah, that kind of threw me. Um, this game is not complex. Um, there are some things that people will have to keep track of, like the crit block, but I was able to do that quite easily. The crit success, okay. Um, knowing which dice to roll, remember, if you play this game with two to four players, it's less things to keep in mind. If you're going to play it solo, then you need to be able to understand how all your characters work. If you're playing it with four players, all you care about is your character. So as you upgrade, these are things that you care about. You track your stuff. Um, when Billy's broken, I got to fix him. We got cool people and the like. So uh, let's see. You'll see how consequences work. You'll see how the ship works in the next playthrough. Does this game seem difficult? To me, it seems fun. It's a sci it's sci-fi dungeon crawl. Or I think it was Brian who said it, who was like, is this sword and sorcery in space? Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, I really like the ability to add dice. I really, really like that. Um, I like the ability. I like that you get two actions. I wish it was three, but you get two actions. Um, I really appreciate that for what it is. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? The characters are all different. It's not, you're not saying, oh, Caden's just like Yen Gao or Uma or Jazz. Caden is Caden. He's a melee fighter, so you fight with him. Um, I like Jazz's hacking abilities, the different types of hack that she does. That's pretty cool. Um, Uma is basically your DPS, so as long as I keep two light weapons in her hands, she's just going to be awesome. And Kian Gao is just the tank. So Jazz is probably, as a hacker, she's the caster, because she can 
cast these hacks out through walls or through different things. So we've got our um, melee DPS, our tank, our uh, range DPS, which is Uma, and then we have Jazz, who's our cast. All right, cool. Well, it's been fun. <laughs> it's been five hours. <laughs> so I, I love playing board games, and, but I think I'm gonna, you guys are probably sick of hearing my voice, and you hear my voice cracking. So this is why I won't do a 24-hour stream. I'd probably be dead. Uh, when soloing, must you play all four characters? Yes. You ha yes, Brian. You have to play with four characters. That is unchangeable. You have to play with four characters. So if you're going to solo it, play with four. Well, you have to. Uh, any other questions? Shoot them away. Fire away. I'm here to answer them. I'm here to answer them all. Hey. Quervo Goldstein. Let's get and that, that lady who is here, she's a playable character. <laughs> I already have her card right here, and she is pretty cool. So, um, but yeah, any other questions? Let me know. I'm I'm here to answer. Because I know there's going to be a lot of questions that come out. Um, I'm sure I made one or two mistakes here and there. It happens. Just let me know in the comments if you see any mistakes that I made for people who. Who play this um infinity universe is a very large universe and all those names i riddled off are part of the infinity universe so for people who get into the infinity universe this is a part of it that's starting a new story arc that builds out so there is a lot going on um there's a lot that's going to be happening this game is fun i had fun with it i mean you heard me at the end like can i get out can i accomplish this mission or will i fail and the one thing that I really, I really appreciate about it is I was killing enemies left and right, but they kept popping back up. So this is one of those games where it isn't, okay, I'm going to lay waste to all the enemies, and then I could walk around the facility and be fine, which is what I said earlier. Um, this is one of those where you need to be very strategic in how you do these missions, or you will get overwhelmed. All right, Brian, thanks for joining. Okay, everybody. Uh, cool, cool, cool. If you have any more questions, put them in, put them in comments below. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw. You want to see more? Please let me know. Um, uh, likes go a long way. <laughs> I want to thank my Patreons. Thank you so much. I usually thank you first, but I was super nervous and jittery about making sure I didn't mess anything up. So thank you, Patreons. Thank you, YouTube subscribers. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Keep subscribing and liking what you see, and I'll be adding more. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we will be playing Descent, second edition, Journeys in the Dark, and we'll be doing the Road to Victory or Adventure or whatever it's called, the app. So we're going to be playing Descent tomorrow on Board Game Week Bonanza, because this is the last week of the year. And then after that, on Friday, we'll be playing Too Many Bones, where I play Patches. And then we will rest for the weekend <laughs> and go from there. Um, this has been awesome. Like I said, if you have any questions, I'm in Facebook. I am on Twitter. I am in Make the Comments. I will answer. People will let you know I answer, I answer as fast as I can. So I will answer as fast as I can to answer any of your questions or say, shoot, I missed that. We'll fix and adjust. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I appreciate it. Um, this has been a lot of fun. This game is exactly what I thought it would be, so I'm not disappointed. So, cool. We will see where it goes from here. Thanks, everybody. Insert, uh, what do you got? Wonderful stream. Take care, everyone. Yep. More games for everyone. Insert comment here, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.